Opening montage. Come on. Cannon. Starry. Uh, seventies. I don't think that's the right cannon. God damn it. Do you mean I spent two days prepping a show on an overweight 70s detective no one remembers? Oh, shit. Canon Films presents an outstanding lineup of films for 1986 and beyond. Major filmmakers, major stars, major motion pictures. Next. Sylvester Stallone hits the road in an 18-wheeler and heads out to become a world-class champion. This time, he's fighting with his bare hands and going over the top. Now let's all get serious. <laughs> you believe in Jesus? Yes, I do. Well, you're going to meet him. Skeletor. It's over. Yes. For you. <sighs> Holy shit, I got chills and they're multiplying. Good afternoon, good morning. Well, I'm here if you lose control. <laughs> God help us all. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good golly, Miss Molly. Welcome to the first It's Only Talk and Roll of 2023. A happy new year to you all on the panel, in the chat. We got the chats on the YouTube, we got the Odyssey, we got the Rumble. I'll try not to ignore, ignore you all <laughs> with this madness. Um, but yeah, Happy New Year. We're going to start the new year off with, as we mean to continue, talking about stuff that we love and having as much clothed fun as humanly possible. Although some of us may well be unclothed below the waist. Who knows? Who can tell? And once again, dear friends, it appears like Shelby in Piranha 3D, we have bitten off way more than we can chew. <laughs> Today, it's all about the wonderful world of canon films. And even a cursory list at the list at the list of canon films from in the Go Go Boys era shows that there are hundreds. There's the good, the bad, the ugly, and the displayed. What? The oh yeah, <laughs> very eclectic. Oh yeah. Um, and we're going to do our best to do canon justice, but I can already see we're probably going to need a round two, round three, round four because it's just so much stuff. They are the Roger Corman of movie studios, yeah, after all. Like Roger out, Corman yeah. Deluxe. In, in a sense, you know, but, um, but so I, because after taking over the ailing soft core and low budget movie house Canon Films in 79, Golan and Globus launched this audacious attempt to take over the movie world and took their company to the brink of being a major studio until the major studios fought back. Bastards. Much to the chagrin <laughs> of the majors, they, they were huge in the 80s. Hundreds of movies. You got your science fiction, your action, your fantasy, your martial arts, teen sex comedies, erotica, dancing, that, 
Emmanuel Four, uh, musicals, Ooh. thrillers, <laughs> horror, art house, and highbrow movies. You know, Oscar potential stuff. Zeffirelli, you name it. They had all that lowbrow stuff. They dominated the VHS market. Rewrote the book in selling and funding movies and made stars out of several of their, their players and created beloved cult movies. So they, they mastered staggered releases, international marketing, cinema distribution. Nobody could sell a film that had never been made like Canon. <laughs> so um, anyway, No Friday, as we know, those of us for certain age, No Friday visit to a rental store in the 80s went without bringing home an armful of Canon movies on VHS. It just gives me chills. And they never looked down on their audience and they went hard on entertainment. So today we're just going to scratch the surface of this. We have a fantastic panel today. I am so thrilled that you're all here. Um, so I'm going to just say hello to all of you. And there's our, our great friend, Imperitus, who I believe I managed to get the proper clip for you today, my friend. Yeah, it's definitely a far cry better than the one last week. <laughs> I don't know what last week was. <laughs> Here's your why. As much as I like black metal, and Pope can agree with me on this, probably Darius and maybe even Razor, yeah. there's a lot of embarrassment that goes on there, too. Yeah, oh, yeah. Indeed. indeed. Uh, but yeah, the most being embarrassing over. thing is not listening to black metal. Well, that's exactly right. Um, <laughs> so uh, thanks for being here, buddy. Hope you had a good new year. Yeah, um, yeah, it's fine. And we're off to a good start next year. Um, Pope, my friend, uh, as usual, get you'll get our cartoon favorite. Yes, I like that one, don't you? How are you, oh, my friend? I adore it, especially with an explorer. <laughs> Yeah, good stuff. It has to be good, but it has to be Gibson. Indeed. Oh, yeah. Great to see you, my friend. Uh, Happy New Year to you. Um, and you, John, as always. John, my friend, you know, one of these days I'm going to get you a proper clip, you know, because it's just... Be scared. Uh, yeah, it'll be. <laughs> so right now, I think you're yeah. just going to have to settle for this one. Let's rock! Can't go wrong with that, guys. <laughs> yeah. Ever. So happy new year to you, John. Good, good to see you. Thanks for joining us again. Uh, Joe, Joe's atmosphere. You know what you're getting. I'm just a dirty white boy. 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 You are indeed you know my dirty white boy. <laughs> you, you know what, man? How you doing? You having a good new year? I'm having the greatest time. Life is good, you know. Uh, it's it's an awesome. We live in an awesome world, despite everything. So I'm very happy. It's good to see you, mate. We have a very, very, very special guest. Somebody a tingle has gone up and down my leg at the very thought of it. Um, I thought this we, was a family show. Well, right? <laughs> Razor that, Fist, that could the just one be the sciatica again. Don't the rageaholic <laughs> himself, Razor Fist, beloved to us all, has joined us. How are you, sir? fantastic as long as the tingle was only up your leg <laughs> i was gonna say don't freak him out because i'm the one who has to answer for this shit oh, <laughs> tom is on the hook for this so yes but um so we, I, I even have a clip for you Uh, I was pretty badass. It's Bill no, they, I've seen that mashup with James Brown and Judas Priest. That's right. I love Bill McClintock mashups to the base. And you know what? It's not terrible. Yeah. I think there's a uh, Michael Jackson Judas Priest one, if I remember correctly. No, it's the, Michael Jackson Iron Maiden The Trooper. Yeah. That's I cool. haven't heard that one either. Oh, it kicks it's ass. Stellar. It's stellar. Yeah, uh, yeah. Thank you, thank you all for having me. You, as if you have to twist my arm to talk about canon films. Oh. I started my <laughs> channel reviewing Cobra. I've been dressing like that movie every fu ever fucking since, and uh, living my life by that coda. Ladies yeah, and so. yeah, I, I think I, I thought even... you were the Jennifer Lawrence of Cobra, meaning that Sly based <laughs> it on you. I thought that was kind of right. how that was. I think no, I might even no. have the. Uh, oh, here we go. Here we go. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. exactly. That's like, the, uh, I'm actually, it's your true I, story. Yeah. See, I, I'm actually the Brigitte Nielsen <laughs> of uh, this podcast. I'm, I'm totally <laughs> in a swimsuit right now. 
<laughs> with a bunch of robots for no reason. Is that a, a Death Wish t-shirt? That's a yeah. Charles. Yeah, I would that say is you're, awesome. Possibly you're more the the um, the Franco Nero of the part. I think that's the Franco Nero. <laughs> A ninja only but, attacks uh, and defense. Exactly. Thank you for joining the show, sir. Happy New Year to you. I hope you've you've had a good New Year's New Year so far. Yeah. Good one. Yeah, God, I I absolutely have. It's been God. It's it's crazy. It's it feels like I haven't been on YouTube since last year. What the fuck? Uh, well, <laughs> indeed, it's been a long time. Been a long time. Been a long, lonely, lonely time. I would say. Uh, yeah. yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Uh, also with us is my. Uh, Co-host, executive producer, um, brother in arms, Mr. Darius Munchausen. How are you, my friend? Quiet. Hey, uh, uh, happy New Year! And uh, you know, thanks for uh, for having me on. As as always, uh, glad I could be on time today because I had the day off work, and uh, oh, very nice. excited. Cool, and uh, no. you know, as a uh, you know uh, uh, a very sheltered millennial, I figured I probably wouldn't have seen any canon films, but that is. <sighs> Of not course, true. not true. Not true. I bet you've seen way more than you know. There are films I didn't even know were canon films until the last few days. Yeah, yeah I weird. didn't realize uh, Buckaroo Banzai across oh. the eighth dimension was canon. Shit, I've done my top five and I've not got that in there. Fuck, oh. I'm going to have to read oh. it. Oh, nah. <laughs> All right, can you know. Can I make a top 500? But, uh, well, yeah. I mean, All shit, right. there's already three Death Wish movies that got to go in there. I mean... Well, Fair. Well, Pope excuse me, those. four and Death Wish movies. Death, the are you kidding me? The crackdown is incredible. Do we well, count I guess 10 to technically Golan did, or well, I would say five was produced by Golan, but not the other one, right? Yeah. Do we count yeah. Ten to Midnight as a as a Death Wish movie because it's similar? There's a man. There's a few '80s Bronson movies that could be considered Death Wish movies, like Kinjite, Forbidden yeah. Subjects, could easily be in there. Mm -hmm. If you really wanted to squint, Assassination, maybe. I mean, there's there's some in there. There's quite a few. He basically ten to midnight. All all throughout ten to midnight 80s. is is one I would count as on the verge of being a Death Wish, not just yeah. because of Bronson, just the, the whole the whole thing. Murphy's but, Law. Murphy's Law for crying out loud. Oh yeah. God, yeah. 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 See, this is it. Once we start, well, that's probably about his one, biggest non Death Wish one, isn't it? That's a great yeah. one. So, anyway, don't well, fuck with Jack Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, these, it's lines and scenes like that that I really want to get. I just love his well, voice. Apparently, just... people do fuck with Jack Murphy. A lot of people. <laughs> well, once, maybe. Uh, so, anyway, well, welcome, Daddy. Yeah. Welcome, Darius. Take him to Detroit. No! No, not Detroit! No! No, please! Anything but that! Uh, a resident <laughs> Michigan resident. <laughs> hey, uh, by the way, did you see that uh, heavy metal cover of ABBA's Happy New Year that I found? Oh, you found a metal one? Oh, I found God, two, I actually. I didn't see it because I love that song. Oh, bro, you want a ABBA cover in heavy metal. Oh, yeah. Nobody did it better than Ingve Malmsteen with uh, oh. Gimme Gimme Gimme. gimme. A man That's after a name from the past, oh. right there. Oh, I've got to write that he annihilated that song. It's incredible. Oh, I've got to listen incredible. to that. Who did he have sing on that one? Mark Bowles, his original singer Ooh, from the A. Okay, nice. all right, cool. Did he? Yeah. He didn't change the gender though. He kept it. Give me, give me, give me a man after Red Knight. Well, Mark Bowles is actually gay, but he oh, did not. He switched it to girl. So oh, uh, I wish he'd kept it the same. That would have been good. <laughs> no, no, no. He changed it to give me, give me, give me your love after midnight. Oh, uh, right. right. Oh, okay. <laughs> Made it neutral. Neutral. Yeah, exactly. Neutralized it. Yes. Yeah, that sounds great. But but having I just heard a voice. It's our other great friend of the channel, great supporter, uh, guy that I've ever nothing but love for. Our good buddy Tom. How are you, my friend? Oh, I didn't know you were talking about me. I'm so I'm sorry. About you. <sighs> I'm glad to be here. I, I try to make these as often as I can, but uh, for something like this, like Razor Fist, Fist said, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta be here for the canon. Oh, Fest. We, I mean, yeah. come on. We, we could talk canon all night and all day, and I really appreciate you uh, being here, my friend. I know it's uh, just wanted to mention briefly that uh, uh, obviously some some bad news, which was the death of Fuji. Yeah. Um, if I could just, uh, I was actually going to share that screen. Hang on, give me a second. Death here. of who? Uh, Uche. 
from Geeks and Gamers. I mean, You're kidding Whoa. me. Yeah, so our our oh. deepest condolences to, to him, to his family, to the Geeks and Gamers crew and to him. I know you guys were close, so uh, very, you know, my condolences are in that. Well, it's just shocking stuff. Yeah. I mean, of everybody on the Midnight's Edge crew, I probably knew him best besides Mikey. So yeah, like it, yeah. it was it was a hell of a shock to to find this out today at the end of the show. But uh, yeah, yeah uh, my thoughts and prayers go out to his family and of course all the the gang over at Geeks and Gamers. And uh, yeah, he, he was a big teddy bear. Even if you didn't agree with everything he he said, he, he was still uh, a good dude. He was. Yeah. was that, and that, that's what we we have in this fellowship is you don't have to agree with everybody as long as we eventually yeah. end up treating each other with respect. And he's and, only yeah. two years older than I am. He's entirely mm. too young. Yeah. No doubt. So anyway, uh, our yeah, our condolences there and uh, sad news indeed. And you know, um, you know, football players put a lot of stress on their body as far yeah. as uh, weight gain and and things like that. So. Hundred yeah. percent. Football, exactly. hockey, and wrestling are probably yeah. the three they that do. are most damaging. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, last but not least, our my my dear dear friend Courtney. Thank you for being here, Courtney. I'm glad you were able to join us. I know you got a few things going on behind the scenes. Uh, how are you, how are you feeling today? Is it working? Oh, hey, hi, hi guys. Hi. I'm uh, I'm doing well. Look at your beard. I just showed up. I know. <laughs> so, I pretended I was here, but I wasn't. I'm, it's, it's the same going for the Randy Quaid look eventually. So it's, uh, He's not working anymore. So, oh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, sorry, I've got your clip, Courtney. Sorry. You know, hey, a, look, it's one of the only two existing <laughs> Motley Crue albums. I do have a tattoo that is Motley Crue based. Oh, right. oh show it. I love I, I have never, they're one of those bands where I have, I, I, I don't know that there's a greater dichotomy between loving absolutely everything they did before a certain year <laughs> and uh, hating right, everything right. they did after right. a certain year. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, I shout at the devil is one of my top tens yeah. ever, like incredible album. But uh, after that, not so much. Although I am a, a bit of a uh, theater of pain enjoyer. They, yeah, the Rubicon was crossed at some point. Your album's good. Yeah. yeah. So, the first Courtney, two are all that you, sorry, Courtney, you mentioned the tattoo. Well, I'm sorry, but we demand receipts of all tattoos on this show. <laughs> I'm not showing my belly. It's my entire torso area. <laughs> not right now. I've, oh, I I'll wait, or maybe. I've it on, before on, yeah, your, you did. on your show. You did, yeah. See, yeah. now it's going to be today. Chekhov's tattoo. Not today, oh, boys. Right. I got a tramp <laughs> stamp. You want to see it? <laughs> yeah, yes. go, go for it, Tom. Much I'm kidding. Now. I'm kidding. Of course I do. We know it's the bat dad anyway. I know it's true. Yeah. So, <laughs> welcome to the panel. And you notice I've managed to do, spin this show out. So, 25 minutes has been just talking, and we haven't even spoken about canon yet, hardly. So, isn't that clear? <sighs> yeah. Well, according to our president, we're not allowed to own them. So, canons, <laughs> I, there's nothing, nothing that says you can't. <laughs> and this constitution, you can own a canon if you want. Hell, you can own a warship, probably, a battleship. Well, I mean, that was sales. legit legal. Yeah. It still is, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, well, that's a whole nother rabbit hole. We probably don't want to go into. <laughs> We've got enough movies to talk yeah. about. At this point, though, just before we kick off with some real canon movie chat, I'd just like to say greetings to everyone in our chat. Um, the you know, if we've already got, I think, on YouTube, I have to say, we've got 111 watching. Welcome to everyone who's supported the show before. Welcome to all new people. I can see lots of we've even got some bots, which is always a sign that we're getting somewhere. That's, that's, <laughs> how, you know it's, that's how you know it's legit is when there's sex bots in the chat. Right? Exactly. Sex bot, sex bot. You're my sex bot. That's Tom that. Jones, isn't it? Um, so there's all I, I don't know if I can name you all, there's so many of you, but you know who you are, and we'll be trying to show some uh, some of your chats on the screen. And I definitely want to hear your your favorites, your favorite moments, uh, that we can try and call some up in clips and so on and so on. So just let us know what your favorites are. Uh, we're all going to cover ours and some general chat about that. Also, there's people over in Odyssey. Uh, thank you for being over there too. We'll, we'll keep checking in with you, don't worry about that. And right now, 
Uh, nobody appears to be on Rumble, though, usually if that picks up uh, later on. So, uh, But YouTube, um, lots of folks are great. See, lots of our friends here. Love them all. Uh, so, Canon, what can we say? Um, <laughs> How do we, we got to start at the beginning. We got to start with some of the earlier ones. And otherwise, I know nobody's going to talk about this one. Fucking Cannon, hell. it grabs you by the balls. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. We got to start with Joe. For well, the 70s yeah. movie. Because to me, that's the first proper Cannon movie. There's just an angry dude in New York wasting hippies with a shotgun. So that's all it is. It's incredible. It's an 80s Cannon movie <laughs> transpo just transposed into the fucking 70s. That's all it is. It's so let's talk excellent. about Joe then. Yeah. And it's funny, yeah. I was wondering whether we should include that one or not. Because it's was it actually a Golan Globus or was it just it, that was a pre that was just a uh, Canon well, 1970 okay. Canon film for yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, Peter so Boyle cool. was never better. Like, absolutely, I don't even care. In, in Young Frankenstein, everybody loves Raymond. Forget about it. He was incredible in this movie. He just hated hippies and wanted to kill them with shotguns. And, <laughs> and really, to me, that's yeah, cinema verity. Relatable. Cinema verity. Um, that one or hardcore, one of the two. So let me just open uh, up a little uh, window to some images of that. But that was actually um, Peter Boyle. I mean, the canon yeah. had some heavyweight actors. Yeah. At times, yeah, absolutely. Not, yeah, got, not, got not, Academy Award too. Robert Shaw, Peter Boyle. There's a <clears throat> list of top actors who and lit directors, Franco Zeffirelli and guys like that, all made movies for Canon at some point. So it wasn't just yeah. you know Chuck Norris. Was oh, that was uh, that. Susan Sarandon's first film, by the way. Joe. All right. Oh. Did she get semi naked in it? I can't remember. <laughs> she she usually did early on. I don't know. I, I can't it's remember. a canon movie, isn't it? Yeah, let me right. find a decent image of well, that. Well, yeah, one. but 70s canon. 70s canon. That's my kind of canon. 70s canon. Um, here we go. So let me share this uh, just so we can see the uh, see what that uh, poster or, or uh, looked like. Share screen. Sorry about this, everybody, but it takes me. There we go. Yeah. So this is uh, Joe with. Peter Boyle. Um, oh, I, I actually have to say I have some I, ha, I have seen it way back in the day and I have some sympathy for him. It's it, it, that is a really good that was one of those movies that came around right around the time. Okay, we're in kind of still the Vietnam War. It's a lot of political strife. Yeah. I think this Death Wish, Dirty Harry, Street Crimes really bad. There's a lot of kind of political strife. I think a lot of these movies, and Joe is one of them, are an answer like to that. Mm. Really, they're they're intended as this sort of cathartic release. And I actually think this movie plays better now, <laughs> decades later. Unfortunately, yeah. the, <laughs> there's well, been several it, movies it's since, like Falling Down. Uh, there's one that yeah. uh, I can't remember the network. name of it. Network there was is one. Good one uh, oh, and network. Robert yeah, Shaw network. again. Was that Robert Shaw Network? No, oh. no. Oh, I think it was, oh, I'm thinking of um, the the one in the subway. That was Robert Shaw, right? So no. Uh, anyway, sorry. Yeah, you're right. William Holden. So I noticed this is directed by John G. Avildsen. So Rocky Stallone, etc. So there's some mm -hmm. some uh, links there. But uh, yeah, that's it's been about forty years since I've seen this. I think, <laughs> but good stuff nonetheless. Uh, yeah, so Canon had that distinctive logo, but the two boys that founded it, uh, Israeli citizens, I didn't realize until I watched the documentary movie, the Gogo -Go Boys movie, that they were actually, I knew they were cousins, but Menachem Golan changed his name from Globus. So they would have been Globus and Globus, but he changed yep. his name. I think because of the Golan Heights thing uh, that was going on. In, in just, just nobody tell Kanye. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Were they so Globus the, well, elitists? The, the interesting thing about this is... <laughs> the Globus lists. It, yeah, this this story is kind of, a, you know, you, you do have the cliche of the Jewish Hollywood boss, but these guys were like total outcasts. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Not, oh, this this oh, kind of yeah. flies in the face of that narrative. These guys were hated by the other studio bosses, like, yeah. with a passion. Yeah, they were true outsiders, rebels. They were coming from that Israeli market where they they strike 
you know, they hit it big there, but that's a drop in the ocean to Hollywood. And the majors did not like these guys, did not like them at all. And, uh, but I think it was Menachem had the, the artistic vision. He was the director, the writer, had made a lot of hit movies in Israel. It was Topol, particularly, as an actor that he brought to fame. Uh, and then Globus was his younger cousin who was kind of, he had been a projectionist in cinema and loved movies, but he was more the sort of money man and came up with some fantastic ways of selling. As I say, they sold movies they had never made. All they had yeah. was a, an idea, a line. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, and the way they would sell movies, I mean, we should probably talk about the fact that they sort of had, uh, <clears throat> they, they went back to the old Hollywood system almost, like a really low-rent version of it, where they sort of had mm. a stable of actors that they had, um, which didn't hadn't been the case for decades. And yeah. But the difference was, rather than being Lauren Bacall and Humphrey Bogart and whatever, Veronica It was Jean-Claude Lake. Van Damme. And- it was Jean-Claude <laughs> yeah. Van Damme and Chuck the- Norris. Dolph Lundgren and Chuck Charles Norris. And, yeah. and so and on. Like, it, was, it was those guys. It was like a stable of action stars and, and some other like non-action star type people. But, you know, they... And there were some people, man, who expected to launch their careers through canon and it didn't act- exactly work uh, uh let me tell you about a little film called uh, american ninja <laughs> oh, man, they tried uh, so hard wow. for so many years with that uh, yeah so what's the story behind that eventually it did get made but uh was that the well, it, was dudikoff as an action star dudikoff yeah. yeah dudikoff had been in a lot of other stuff he was actually there's a what what is that called uh i think it's called nuclear dreams there's like a post-apocalyptic kind of a thing it actually wound up inspiring fallout he had been in like sci-fi films he had been in a more serious fair and he was sort of starting his career with canon and basically this i mean he probably could have been a, a pretty decent star if he wasn't mm. in american ninja movies <laughs> and, and well, then he stopped and wound up having to come back which is always a great sign uh for your career i think we may have to to um get the trailer for Amer- american ninja and we did have a clip in the montage the bucket one always stuck in my head the bucket you know yeah that's great uh, and, well but, enter it all started with enter the ninja though they started the ninja trend for sure yeah. oh for sure absolutely yeah yeah, yeah I mean, uh, ninja, Capper, of course, talk. was Ninja Three, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. The, so go ahead. The classic show. They got up to they got up to three or four, or they got really far into the series. But Dudikoff was gone by like the second or third, five, three, yeah, five in total. But I think he he, he came got, back for the straight to like they had a straight yeah. to video run too, or were all of them straight to video? I know the first or second one I think were theatrical releases. But, yeah, I think after the second one they all went straight to video. Yeah, I was going to say. He came back at like four, I think it was. Or so five. there's um, Enter the Ninja. Because and he actually, the are fun. He, he wound up being in a, in a film, a, a sequel to a film that it's going to have to feature prominently here. And that would be a little Chuck Norris ditty called Invasion USA. Oh, yeah. Um, the, yeah. the sequel to that is Attack Force. And they re- they recast Chuck Norris as Michael Dudikoff, <laughs> and it's ridiculous. <laughs> Gul, Gul Dukat is in this movie as a ninja wearing a Wait, mask. Mark Olivo is in this movie. Anna, yeah, it's incredible. But it's we all you movie. mean Chuck Norris wasn't in the movie? It was hardly noticeable. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with the green recycling of actors. I mean, right, absolutely. Okay, uh, did that I grew up in the '90s. I knew Mark Alimo as Gal Dukat, and that was it. And then yeah. I kind of see him in stuff in the '80s, and I, you know, he's still great in that. He I'm was a heavy in the '80s in a lot of stuff. He played mob henchmen a lot, stuff like that. So, just before we go any further, I just wanted to point out, uh, to call out a few tips that have been left. Um, first of all, um, Martino tipped fifty-four, fifty-three. This is the can it's either Canadian convert conversion to Canadian currency or it's or just it's actual a, dollars. Or it's an actual movie reference. I'm trying to figure <laughs> out which. <laughs> so thank you for that, Martino. We were chatting earlier and uh, I know you subscribed earlier. It's uh, great to see you here. Uh, there have been others. Um oh well even people even people apparently on the uh 
the uh, the stream are tipping, so I'm not going to have to get to those. Here we go. With Joe's atmosphere. Sorry, I can't show the stream element stuff directly. It has to be this cut and paste. Um, one of these days, I'll figure out how to fix that. Uh, there we go. So if it would just return. There we go. So Joe's atmosphere. Uh, sorry about this, guys. For some reason. Oh, there you go. So Joe's Atmosphere has, and thank you for being on the panel, Joe, has tipped $5. Hail to Canon Films, some of the greatest TNA action movies you'll ever see. <laughs> I'm assuming TNA it does mean what I think it means. It means exactly what you think. <laughs> yeah. Total nonstop action. That's it. Yeah, total nonstop exactly. action. That's, That's right. right. Total so, nonstop action. action. So <laughs> thank you for those tips, guys. I think um, there may be others, and forgive me if it takes a while to get to them, but we'll get there in the end. Well, I just wanted to uh, bring up real quick, because like Razor touched on a little bit, but like the whole uh -huh. formula on how they made their films, like they built like their stable of actors. You're right about that. And they yeah. would pre-sell all these movies, right? They'd go to these movie markets wow. mm -hmm. and they would they would fill out, you know, variety or whatever it was with a shit ton of fucking like posters of movies that were probably never going to get made. Mm -hmm. But yeah. they thought they could and they had potential and that's what they would do. They would sell it on this idea that you were going to have this actor in this vehicle and, and, and that was kind of how they did things for Christ. What was it? Almost two decades or more. And, you know and, and really, there's other work. studios that are, yeah, and there was, well, I was just going to say, somebody who perfected that and, and and built a studio on the same kind of ideas but didn't, you know, crush under the same weight that, that Canon did was New Line Cinema. Robert Shea built New Line Cinema that way. He he pre-sold these movies. In fact, what one thing I loved is the story he told about how Lord of the Rings got made. He pre-sold that movie. That's how it got made, basically. Everybody right. was freaking out. They're like, you're going to bankrupt the studio. Mm -hmm. You're going to bankrupt. He's like, no. He's like, even if the movie flops, it's already made money. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's kind of how canon worked. But th at the end, they just kind of crushed under their own weight of their ambitions, let's say. Yeah. But we'll get to that eventually well, in due well, course. In the yeah. montage, that was the, the start of it with the over-the-top piece was the 1986 promo reel that they made. And at least four of the movies in the promo reel never got made. That one did, but many others didn't. There was the... the, the um, Scorsese, Dustin Hoffman, La Brava mob movie never got made, but it's on the promo reel. So that's right. what they did. They <clears throat> rustled up cash, went to Cannes and showed these tra these promo reels and faked up the artwork and the titles changed and all sorts of stuff. Uh, they were the masters at that, you know, and the masters yeah. of like taking different markets and marketing stuff differently in them. Sorry, Razor, go ahead. You Oh no, I was just going to say like they so so you kind of we we mentioned earlier they sort of had different incarnations. There was the 70s sort of company. Then we got into sort of the Menachem Glo you know, and and the Glo Golan Globus kind of period in the 80s. Like the two big ones that they got, the two big coups that they scored was first they basically invented the ninja phenomenon with Enter the Ninja. They got right. Franco Nero, fucking Django, to be to mm -hmm. to be a ninja in this movie with horrible <laughs> dubbing over his voice. Uh, well, I don't know like, why he, the guy he could, could barely he speak English, with, and he had the heaviest Italian accent, but he's trying to be an American. Right, like, exactly. But he's he, and he's like the cheesiest American ever. Like he's like a Ken doll in that movie. It's incredible. He, he makes um, Jean Claude Van Damme in Soldier look like positively actually from the South. Right. The, yeah. <laughs> right. Well, the, and, yeah, uh, I, I, and then of course the next big coup that they got, and this probably really launched them on the the whole like full blown we're gonna be the action movie studio front was death wish 2 which they scored i mean that was a sequel to a movie that was a huge hit in the 70s and yes. then they get to produce the sequel and the sequel was a huge success as well and i'm one of the few people who thinks two might actually be better than one it's well really i don't know about better but i agree with you as yeah it's, it was really big movie at the time yeah well i second that razor it's on my top <coughs> five that i was going to go through later of my favorite five and i saw it in the cinema and oh. I was excited because I was too young to see the first one. But mm. I could go see this one, and I just fucking loved it. And to me, I, it is my favorite, more so than the first one. It it's might like, be... No, go ahead. Go ahead. 
I was just gonna say it might be. I, I gotta watch it. See, here's the thing: this a, to, the short version of the story was I actually had this on video when I was a kid. Um, <laughs> believe it or not, oh, no. the, the old Green Warner Brothers case and all. Yes, uh, it wasn't so the I've uncut seen, version, was it? I don't remember mm. exactly. It, it was a movie I shouldn't have been watching, but no. I had seen this one a lot more times <laughs> than the first one. So to me, to see the first one is more of a luxury. <laughs> Uh-huh. So that's probably why I'm more I lean more towards the first one than the second one. But like I have to watch them back to back again, and I probably agree. I, I might agree with you guys. I don't know. Like there's well, a possibility. I, actually, if if you guys don't mind, um, I'm going to attempt to show a few trailers today. I did test some of them. Uh, oh, dude, the Death Wish Two trailer is one of the best. That's like, now I Death think, Wish I, Two also start their deal with MGM, or was that after that? I can't remember it was now. probably around that time because yeah. I know MGM yeah. still it's has the right. Yes, yeah. so I think it might have been. So here's the Death Wish. Which MG, nobody talks shit about canon more than the MGM people. They hate them. Yeah. So we'll just oh, turn the radio great. audio down yeah. a bit. But this is the Death Wish cool. Two trailer. And isn't isn't uh, he the unluckiest man in the world? Is never ever get married to him. Don't be his child. Yeah. No. yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Charles brought we, we, it was a running gag in my series of Death Wish when I did Death Wish month. Like yeah. to, to come into contact with Charles Bronson's penis is to die. And God forbid you come from his penis, right? Sorry. Right. Yeah. So um, am I the only one that may have seen this in the cinema when it was released because I was old enough? You yeah. had aside from yeah. Yeah. I wasn't alive, so I was yeah. sick. I was alive, but I wasn't going to see R rated movies. I was about no 20, 19. I was 19, so it was what year is it? 82. 82. 82? Viewing material I be for me born for another five years. <laughs> I was well, I was almost ready to, to be uh, I was almost 17 almost yeah. well you know you guys were missing out just to go and see this in the cinema and and cinemas weren't necessarily the greatest at that time you know um rough well, cinema a bunch sense. of drunken guys also, the year one of my favorite albums came out so uh, hang on. Can't, where are you oh there you go let's see that again oh, yeah, there we go. oh god will it's priest day because I got my British steel shirt on. Um, this was the cinema I went to see it in. It was late night because it was all rated. Uh, it was full of drunken guys cheering every time somebody died. It was really... <laughs> As it should be. I yeah, it happened, now, I don't know if that the happened when the when the first movie came out that yeah. that was a phenomenon. Was that's they why like, they have that scene right in the second one they, where they're talking about it. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. That- yeah, and, and, and actually, Death Wish Two is interesting in that, like, it's a better made film than people think. Like, there's a lot going on under the hood. Like, there's all this weird kind of little references and the writing and what. Actually, there's a good um, channel on YouTube called Collative Learning, and he did this full length video essay about all these little references in Death Wish Two that are not like. So Michael Winner was after he made the first movie with Bronson, first off, there's a great, great story about Death Wish 1 before I move on that I have to tell about when he pitched the movie to Charles Bronson. And you get this from the Charles Charles Bronson biography, Bronson's Loose, which I highly recommend. And he's like, yeah, he explains the plot. Oh, there's muggers and they they kill your wife and they kill your daughter. And, you know, the, then you go out and you seek vengeance and you, you, you sweep the streets and so forth. And, yeah. <laughs> and Michael Winter, he goes back to Michael Winter. Charles Bronson just kind of sits there and listens. He's like, OK, yeah. And then he goes, yeah, I'd like to do that. And he's like, y- you'd like to do what? The movie? Excellent. That's fact. No, he's like, no, 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 no. I'd like to shoot muggers. <laughs> <laughs> what's and, the name of that biography uh I mean, bronson's loose base. Bro- there's base. two of them it's, okay. it's Bron- bronson's loose which is uh-huh. really about death wish the death wish movie is of charles okay. bronson and then the second one which is bronson's loose again which is okay. a full thing about bronson's film career because my mother is a huge fan. She said she would, she'd leave my father for him. So yeah. that was a really good Charles Brunson, I have to say. The uh, he it wouldn't just have to leave. She wouldn't just have to leave your father. Charles could eliminate your father. From right, exactly. <laughs> but it's funny because don't he was come the, in contact with my dick. Yeah, he was the sweetest <laughs> guy, apparently, a really nice guy. 
very withdrawn, like really private, but yeah, apparently a, a pretty nice guy. Yeah. Um, he very much was a guy who looked at movies like a job. Didn't like, he have like OCD real bad too? I heard or no, read no. somewhere. Not it that I'm aware of it. Anyway. It should have been in the YouTube streamer then. That's, uh... Well, I mean, two of the be- <laughs> two of the biggest movie stars of the you know golden age of movies in my period, at least, you know Christopher Lee and Charles Bronson both viewed it as a job. Absolutely, yeah. He was he, very much, and of course, that means he made movies like King Jite, Forbidden Subjects, and you know, Assassination. Yeah, not and, gonna, like, and not everyone's going to be a hit, but like, right. Honestly, but he also, like, I mean, all, all throughout having this, done the, having right, done right. the Hammer Horror episode that we did, Christopher yeah. Lee took every role that he did seriously and really tried yes. to do the best he could with it. it makes a difference. Yeah, don't ever. No, and Michael Caine the same. Never. The material might be shit. You've got to take the part seriously. Gene Hackman's on that list too. Yeah. But this is no. like one of my favorites as 10 to Midnight. Yeah. So, just- so Death Wish 2 comes around and it was interesting. The first movie is really well made. Like it, even people who don't like action films like Death Wish 1 because it's kind mm. of a crime drama. It sort of has a, a, some of the same appeal as like Taxi Driver and mm-hmm. those kind of movies. Um, it works on kind of a pathos level and Bronson mm-hmm. gives a, a pretty good performance. One of the better ones of his career, honestly, death wish Two, I humbly submit is deeper as a movie in terms of its themes and so forth. Like what it, the message it's actually trying to convey. There's yeah. little touches in the movie that you don't know. I'm serious. There's little, no, touches I, I'm trying to think movie, like, cause like know. the stuff with him and Vincent Gardania, I do remember. Cause I just watched it last year because the 4K came out, and it's oh, been the yeah. first time and they in got years. The, yeah, they released the uncut and the theatrical version, like on. D- and you're Blue probably Rail. right because I do remember the ending being very satisfying with bringing back Vincent's character and Vincent's whole like you know mm. go get them sons of bitches kind of thing, and yes. right. you know it it, it does have I mean, a lot of things to really there, get into. But you're probably talking about the a, themes a, and a things good too. Good example right? of this. A good example of this. There, um, he he goes at the end of the movie without spoiling anything. One of the thugs has basically gotten away with whatever he's done, and he's gonna go take out the thug. He's and the thug has been institutionalized. There's this constant theme of like the system, especially in California, shock is broken. So this guy basically is sent for rehabilitation instead of being sent, you know, executed for murder. So he's going to go into the mental hospital and take this guy out. So he pretends to be a doctor and whatever. But obviously there's like a politically charged element to it. The whole movie is politically charged because his Jill Ireland plays like a, a newscaster and there's sort of a political element to it. Yeah, yeah. So he's asking where the guy is and this doctor in this orderly in the hospital is trying to give him directions yeah it's it's right over here and it's the first door on your uh it's the first door on your right and he aims he he points in the opposite direction he he points to the left and it's like michael winner saying like the left right paradigm it's like Mm. the world is upside down right it's there's these brilliant touches in the script and in the performances that a lot of people don't catch in this movie i highly recommend that video essay and i recommend the book uh okay, bronson cool. Blues, well you remind about- me now yeah because the first movie was more comments like you said it was coming out of that era and you know crime was on the height you know out of the civil rights movement and all that kind of stuff so that's probably where you know a lot of people notated certain elements of the first film though i didn't agree with it and i think they even have a scene in this film where the reporter and they're having a conversation where they're talking about it all. And they talk about, Oh, how it's more racially driven and all that kind of shit. And Charles yeah. Bronson just kind of giggles or whatever. He's just like, yeah. and shakes his head or whatever first, it is. What is, is it that in the first, scene of the first movie where this says, you know, he kills more blacks than whites. Yeah. That and one too. Like, yeah. And then wow. there's this lady who's like, well, more blacks are muggers than white. And like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh my God. It's oh. Like, and Bronson and Bronson and at this cocktail party hearing this and he just walks past kind of, okay. <laughs> yeah. But what I was getting to though, is like all the kidding aside or well, reality aside, let's be real. Like in the, in the sense of the movie itself, that's what she says. Um, but uh, what I was getting to is like, this movie seems to be like, you're right. More of a compliment on this idea that people can be rehabilitated as opposed yeah. to the first film where it was just more about rampant crime 
I think yeah. you're right. That, that's probably yeah. There, the case. there was a little more to it, I thought, and all at the time I was still cheering the the, the murders or the murders, the the revenge killings. There weren't murders. Uh, yeah, there was a little bit more to it, and Winner made a, a good job of directing this. He hasn't always been the greatest director. But, uh, oh, and the Jimmy Page soundtrack. Let's oh, not forget forgot that. about yes. that. Yeah. No doubt. Wow. Right. He, was, he was trying to get into those at the time. Well, didn't he so do the next two after it, or at least the third one too, didn't yeah. he? Didn't like kind of quoted his soundtrack in Death, Death okay, Wish Okay, maybe I'm just misremembering. Yeah, okay. I think he did a little bit of new music for Death Wish 3, but it was mostly just a copy of this one. But this okay. sound, this movie's soundtrack. This really also weird. featured uh, Tony Franciosa, who's always been one of my favorite underlooked actors, um, particularly Tenebrae. If you've ever seen the film Tenebrae, um, Italian horror movie. He's brilliant in that. He did a lot of yeah. interesting stuff like that in Europe. So, um, yeah. Well, the guy did Lawrence Fishburne in one of his early roles is in this, yeah. which is continuing the yeah. theme from wow. Death Wish One. Wow. Um, yeah. And but and uh, Punk, the guy who played Punk Cut, unfortunately, was would die of AIDS shortly after this shit. movie came out. Mm -hmm. um, there's there were a lot of people who were kind of known at the time, or or would become known later on. And of course, he demanded, mm -hmm. as he did on many of his films, Charles Bronson demanded his wife work Jill, on this one. Jill Ireland. Jill Ireland. Jill Ireland. And they stayed together all the, the, until he died, didn't they? They, they were together for a long time. He refused to do love scenes with other women because mm -hmm. uh, yeah. of his wife. Um, <laughs> See, that's yeah. it's interesting because he's it's like other actors like that, like that, that are, have certain morals like that. They're not bothered about shooting people or <laughs> blowing them up from screen. But they're, <laughs> they're damn well, not going. That There's was, there was a that, uh, Neil McDonough yeah. recently said that you know, and Jim Caviezel. I'm not kissing on the room, but I'll blow the shit out of you though. I don't care. <laughs> uh, but this this is actually had made my top five list. It was number four on my top five, Death Wish two. And you have to look at it in the. It's like Shakespeare in the original Klingon. You have to look at canon movies in the original VHS cover. <laughs> That's where they belong. <laughs> <laughs> this is also got one of the greatest lines that's been sampled in a number of different metal tracks. But the "Do you believe in Jesus?" Jesus, yeah. oh, well, you're about to meet him. Great. There's a few the good lines in there. That I love how the movie ends. I love how they end uh, Death Wish Two, where he's like, "Well, you know, there's a there's an office party if you'd like to come with us." I mean, it, <laughs> I, I know it's kind of late at night. You might be busy. He's like, "Of course I will. What yeah. else would I be doing?" <laughs> and then it zooms in on this ominous face of Charles Bronson, just this like cliff face. <laughs> I just like to it is, I just like to call it Christian Delorme, a great friend of the channel. And Joie Noël bon année to you, Christian. As does a lot of streams with me and the non-metal music stuff. Um, Hi, Christian. I have, I have my yeah. He's a great lad. Good to see you, man. He's tipped five dollars. Yeah. Hitman, Chuck Norris, French Canadian Mafia in Vancouver, and random killings. Canon is awesome. Hitman, yes, that's a. I think that one. one was that the last Canon movie, or one of the last, or it might have been one of the first twenty-first century films. Yeah, I think yeah. There, I can't remember the demarcation there where it splits yeah. off, but it was right there at the tail end. I Ninety-two know. or three or four, somewhere in there. Yeah, I can't remember exactly. Possibly Post the Go Go Boys, I think didn't uh, Goland drop out? Well, he, well, yeah. What's his face took the took a few of the projects they were going to make, like Captain yeah. America and a couple of the other ones, and went went twenty first century yeah. films. It's still on the list here of of Golan Globus era ones. So yeah, I Hitman. consider the same thing. But yeah. In fact, let's call up the uh, poster for that one while we're at it. Well, speaking of posters, since you brought the other one up as a video, I don't know if you can share the thing I just shared here, too. Oh, right. Hang on. But here's my video of Death Wish 2. This is the one I was talking about. This is not my personal video, but this is the one it looked like. That's what I meant by the Green Warner Brothers cover. Nice. Oh, yeah. He's oh, yeah. mm -hmm. got that cat, the, the, the hat, the toque, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> the old big Which he's rocking for shelf. a lot of the movie. It's, a, it's interesting. Yeah. He, it's had int the pea coat, he had the peacoat going in the first one. It's kind of interesting when you think about it. He's got a different wardrobe in every movie. That's his superhero one, uniform. Rocket. He had the little trench coat going on, right, in the first one. And then in the second one, he's got the little beanie on and whatever and the little suit coat. And in the third one, heaven heaven help us, he's got a leather jacket on. <laughs> he was very yeah. stylish. Which, which he continues to rock in the fourth one, I believe. I was going to say, didn't he stick with the leather for a couple there? He yeah. did stick with the leather jacket in the fourth one. And... Mm. Uh, 
and the fifth one, he's just old. That's right, yeah. <laughs> the thing is, he was, it's Aww. funny. He's a funny choice because he's not really an action hero. He doesn't do a lot of action. He just shoots people or blows them up. So there's no, <laughs> you know. Well, I mean, if you saw his 70s stuff, he was well, built like a tank, for Christ's sake. Oh, God, go, yeah, go watch, he's a big uh, guy. Go watch mm -hmm. Chato's land. Like, yeah. he looked like a golem, for Christ's sake. Uh, he's running around without well, a shirt on, and he's like 50 at that point. Well, it's he's funny you mentioned built. the golem, because the golem was one of those unmade canon movies <laughs> that they promoted. <laughs> and Charles Bronson was meant to be the star. I don't think he was going to be the golem, though. Yeah. He was going to be fighting the golem. Yeah. Never got made. <laughs> but, Unbelievable. Uh, this is, yeah, this is the Hitman in, in oh, its original the Now this is if you want a Chuck Norris movie that runs on flies under the radar, this is a really good one. Legitimately one of his yeah. best movies. Um he's got the mullet, he's got the sawed off, yeah. he's got the trench coat, he's pretending to be a hitman for the mob and taking down <laughs> He's on the mean streets of Seattle dealing with hipster crime. Oh, it's incredible. Is that the meme, the meme streets or the mean streets? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this, this isn't the original French here. Poorly combat. I did a, a, I did a Rageaholic a Cinema. Yeah, I did a Rageaholic Cinema episode on this one, actually. Oh, all right. Well, I'd, I'd urge everyone to go back and look, that, look at this. I mean, I was looking at your back catalog today. I've watched a lot of your videos Darius as they came Johnson out. But joined. looking back, you've got thousands of videos now all yeah. set up nicely in their themes which is just you're so tidy how do you do that? <laughs> someone mentioned the peacoat i had to you know oh he's mine. got the bronson peacoat on yeah <laughs> this is actually my uh, this was actually issued this is uh the marine corps cold weather jacket really oh. yep uh, well yeah. at least from when yeah. i was in so this is uh, yeah Why go ahead Courtney. every dude obsessed with chuck norris <laughs> Because, he because he's Chuck incredible. Norris. Because he's, that's really he's what every him. man yeah. wants to be. Well, let's talk. I mean, let's talk about how he kind of found a second wind at Canon. Wasn't it Lone Wolf McQuaid that kind of re? I mean, that movie right there. That was when Chuck Norris, like that was when Beard Chuck Norris first started. I'd say I associate him with Canon basically. Like the other stuff to yeah. me is like. His early stuff is like before he was like this is when he yeah. became like his an good guys star. wear black one of his uh, one of theirs. It's not a canon movie, okay. but it, that was an early one. He didn't yep. have the beard in that. He mm -hmm. he rocked yeah. like I feel like Lone Wolf McQuaid is yeah. when Chuck Norris reaches his final form. You're He's got right. the kind of old west gunslinger aesthetic going on with him. He's uh, got the beard. He's got this huge fuck off hand cannon of a gun he's mm. shirtless for like 90 percent of the runtime like it's mm -hmm. let's <laughs> it's, face it most yeah. of us would take both arms to carry that gun and fire it <laughs> just casually right? holding it in his left arm <laughs> he's left but the the um yeah this this is great because it's the french poster and i think as tristan said it was set in montreal which, which heavily a, heavily filmed in vancouver uh, uh yeah, it, it dealt with actually, uh, f f like French Canadian organized crime. Oh, yeah, and heavily. there's there's a quite a bit of that. If you've, I mean, I have my wife's from Quebec, and it's there's some dangerous guys there. Yeah, you know, no, it's, Vancouver it's, it's is like rough the, as like hell. It's like the Italian right now. mafia in you know the East yeah. Coast, but you know more polite. But Chuck Norris sorted them out, no problem. He just turned yeah, up. No problem at all. So I uh, just wanted to say thank you to Ironcaster. He tipped two dollars seventy three in memory of the giggler. He met <laughs> Charles Brunson, R.I.P. Yes, and he didn't last too long as a result. But uh, good one, thank you, Ironcaster. Appreciate it very no, much. No, but that. Chuck Norris is like the Leonardo of of canon films, right? Like he is that yeah. steadfast you know, leader type kind of guy. He, he has all the same kind of like every man. Well, Bruce Lee had sadly been gone at this point, but yeah. He made some really good, I mean, we're looking at missing in action here. Oh, uh, man, a, lot yeah. of, a lot of people think missing in action was a rip off of Rambo. It's actually the other way around. Yes. Um, missing in action. Yeah. They, they filmed I the first two that. missing in action films at the same time. Are, are, are shortly one after the other like they were yeah this is how funny. did that go missing in action one is actually missing in action missing two. in action two new scripts and they liked the second one more so they released it first as the first movie yeah. 
And then they released yeah. Missing mm-hmm. in Action 2, The Beginning, which yeah, is actually yeah. the first movie. No, so you're anyways, confusing it me. Predates Rambo. It predates <laughs> okay. Rambo. What, what um, happened it, was, yeah, by like two or three years, it predates Rambo, uh, First Blood Part 2. So this whole idea is because it's a very similar plot. Mm-hmm. But they filmed both of the films before they ever got released because they filmed them back to back, like Razor Fist was saying. And when when Golan and Globus saw it, they're like, "The first one sucks. The second one's good. So what do we do?" Well, they're like, "Well, let's release the first. The second one is the first one, and then we'll release the the, the original one as a prequel mm-hmm. after the after that one does well." Because they knew it tested, it tested like super well, I guess, with the, the audience. That's the genius of these so, yeah. guys, Tom. That's yeah. the genius of these guys. They weren't afraid to do that stuff. They weren't afraid to promote the shit out of something then, even on line one written yet, you know. But well, they were willing to to do all. So they had the chain of cinemas as well, didn't they? They did all the tricks, and they weren't afraid to do that kind of thing. And I think that contributed a lot to their success. I mean, these guys were in a were a ball here away from becoming a, an actual major at one point. Right. Yeah. And I mean, gosh, and, and they awesome. they hit gold a lot. Like, it yeah, was kind of crazy how they would just trip and fall in it. Like, I, I think the what it really comes down to is they had a good sense of what American audiences kind of wanted. Mm. Sort of. Like, they, okay, missing in action, this totally plays to our sort of pathos about the Vietnam War, right? Totally mm-hmm. works. Mm. Another one they hit with just a few years later that was massive at the time was Delta Force. Yes. Yeah, which was, yeah, that was totally, say, that's it was the truck rash. I remember. Yeah. Right. There were a yeah. rash of terrorist kind of hijackings of airliners and stuff at the time. And they're like, you know what? Fuck it. We're basically going to kick the terrorist asses in film form. That's basically what we're going to do. That's what the Delta Force is. <laughs> and, and it was and, huge. Yeah. The, funny, the funny part is it's not too far off from what the real life Delta Force was doing at that point. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, what do you think of the style of the the movies? The canon movies well, have a particular did, style. I find they just they no, took what what like Sergio Leone and those guys did with the the spaghetti westerns and did for Clint Eastwood, and the kind of movies that like you know John Wayne used to make. You know, yeah. movies made for guys who like movies, right? Like the whole the whole thing like that. It's it's it's, it's they they're not even attempting. To try and and pretend that they're like doing anything more than what they are, right? Like that's the thing with a canon film. You can piss and moan and bitch all day long about some of these other companies and the shit that they would put out and the what the posters would promise. Mm-hmm. You knew exactly what you were getting into with a canon film. With that's George, the thing. George Pepper. It, it, it's it's not going to be anything more than that, right? And and I think yeah. that that's where where Razor's right. Like they knew exactly how to. Not just to the American audience, but how to cater these movies to all other audiences. Because yeah. they knew that those kind of audiences existed everywhere. And and these kind of movies, just like with Sylvester Stallone movies and Schwarzenegger movies at the time, which were very similar, they played to so many broad audiences. And they yeah. didn't have to try and, and put shit in there for the women because they knew the women would just come to see like Chuck Norris be sexy. Mm-hmm. Like to them, think, that to uh, most yeah. women, that's him being sexy right now. Yeah. So I like, thought yeah. that's what you meant by broad audience. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Man, it Some got, of really, it got really huge at one point. You know, they made a Chuck Norris uh, toilet paper at one point. Oh, yeah, God. Yeah, God. Call, call you, know, you know what? I would never, anyway. I wouldn't wipe my arse on that paper. No, <laughs> I'm afraid he'd kick in the door and kick my ass. <laughs> so, Joe, uh, Joe, which is, is this your favorite stuff? That sort of Chuck Norris, Delta Force, or are you have another? As far flavor? as far as Chuck Norris goes with canon, yeah, that that's my favorite is the Delta Force stuff. Yeah, yeah Lee there. Marvin is one of my favorites ever. He did an. Yeah, open, I think I'm Delta sure Force you guys know a comedy it called Cat Ballou back is. in the day. He won the Academy yeah. Award for playing brothers yeah. that were gunslingers. And sure. he plays a drunk gunslinger in that movie. Always been a big fan of his, man. And all the war movies he made over the years and stuff. And this, yeah, I went and saw this in the theater and I loved it. Yeah, it was awesome. Cool. I'd agree with Joe. I, I mean, like, let's face it, you have, especially the first Delta Force movie, you have Chuck Norris and, and fucking Lee Marvin in the mm-hmm. same movie. Yeah. With Robert Vaughn playing a fucking. What was it, George Pippard? Well, it wasn't George Pippard, sorry. Um, George Kennedy. Yeah. Kennedy? He might have been in one. He was yeah. the yeah, George there. Kennedy. He was in the first one. He plays the priest. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Ooh, Lee the other trick he's always drunk and irritable. One of the uh, generals in the first one as well. That's the, the thing about these movies. They tapped into, uh, like, it almost they, it, they took the guys that were big in, like, 60s westerns and brought them back in these action movies, man. It was well, really that's, cool. Well, that's... That's kind of what Glowin and Globus knew is they knew that these guys still had an audience, not just yeah. in the U.S., but especially outside of the U.S. And and they they knew that not only that, they would tap into the trends and they were so e they were able to turn around a movie so quickly that that they got ahead of the trend when it came to like, you know, like Electric Boogaloo and all that shit uh, breaking. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, yeah, they got ahead of that trend they big did. time. And, and that's kind of where that paid off for them, like Razor Fist was saying. Is like once in a while they have these movies that would just, like to be honest with you, I think that's their big, still their biggest film to this day. It's both one of those them. Movies. Breaking, well, yeah. Breaking was, a, was truly that's a groundbreaking movie. So I know where we're talking about Chuck, but I know, Courtney, you and I were speaking earlier, and you particularly love Breaking. Um, <laughs> I didn't was, realize it was a canon film. Yeah. Because um, I, I honestly had to look up canon films. I was like, I don't even know what's like, what a canon film is. And then I was like, oh, all these movies. Okay. I if you rented it at a video store in the 80s, chances are it's a canon it's film. It's a canon movie. Yeah, yeah. no yeah. doubt. Well, it's yeah. like yeah. armfuls. Yeah. You could go away with an armful of canon movies in a Friday night. You wouldn't know there were My, canon novels. Of course, I had them all on beta because I knew how to get around the copy guard and, and record them on beta when I, when I, uh, <laughs> I had about 500 movies on Betamax. It was hilarious. They, they were like the they smaller ones, right? Yeah, they were, yeah, they were the ones that you can only go five hours with. Yeah. Or VHS, you go eight or 12. So Breaking, yeah. uh, which we had a little clip of in the opening montage. Um, so I'm trying to get the screen to share. I learned to do uh, the one. That's right, got it. Um, <laughs> breaking was, was literally groundbreaking. I mean, that and this, the follow-up introduced so much stuff that yeah okay it was in the culture anyway the hip hop culture but it's it never been seen to, uh, for a wide audience and mm -hmm. the, and the, the sequel the, recontextualized the word boogaloo it did yes, yes <laughs> well boogaloo was also a villain in one of their more curious movies the apple <laughs> which was a musical science fiction musical they made in 79 like the the main villain it was called mr boogaloo but spelled g l o w o or something but, um but yeah, the I think in this the the dance offs so between good. the, the teams, that stuff is now like I mean this was four years. Well, ago. there's pretty much a whole genre oh, built on this, right? Yeah. Like you, yeah, and it's not the only one. They they did this with a lot of genre. I mean, look at the movie. This was yeah, this was just an bomb. example. This was a total bomb. But like, look at the movie Life Force, which oh, is like that became a to... whole. That vampires from outer space, unfortunately, became a whole genre in like the '90s and shit. Like, and and Life Force was, with the benefit of hindsight, like kind of a. It was it was post Alien, but it was pre Event Horizon. It was pre like there was there was a whole thing after this. They would they had this tendency to either hit on something after it was already yeah. popular like like they desperately tried to jump on the indiana jones thing with king solomon's mines mm, oh yeah and yeah. that didn't work out and then the alan quatermain uh, alan quatermain yes follow up. was and, that a follow-up to that or was that and the lost city of go yeah absolutely yeah. yeah they were they were trying to hit on that kind of thing didn't Richard really work Chimperman, or, yeah. or they would kind of create a trend and not really know what to do with it they did that with break in they did that with some of the action movies and it was like they couldn't seem to balance that. And in the end, I actually think that kind of unbalanced uh, a amount of like the, the way they would sort mm -hmm. of have business for a while. And then and then they would yeah. have a series of bombs, I think. Is yeah, yeah. I'd like to play more of Breaking, uh, but it's got a lot of soundtrack music on it, like craft work and stuff like that. that you, nice. you can't play. But um, the last like, part there was like, you, yeah, they were ahead of the trend by a long shot in some cases. You're right. Um, yep. Yeah. We haven't talked about it. We haven't talked about it yet, but Bloodsport, right? Bloodsport yep. is oh, yeah. pre Mortal Kombat. Well, but Bloodsport is the reason Mortal Kombat exists. Like, yep. straight yes. up. Like, we're, and we're that became a series. It's not of even like a joke. It's like there's an actual bridge to it. But Yes. We're definitely going to get to that. But, Courtney, just break, breaking was one of the choices you had as one of your favorites. Is it? Is it? Just tell us a little Absolutely. bit why you like it so much just the dancing um and and the style 
like <laughs> on the on the cover right there, the person on the right. Um, my mom dressed like that. <laughs> I <feel> like <laughs> Um, my mom was an aerobics teacher all through the 80s. So, right, you know, yeah, this yeah. was like the dancing and she was, a, you know, she used to be a dancer, not not a stripper, a dan actual dancer. Nobody like even thought she was, Courtney. I don't know why you felt need, you need to Well, most it. people... I, I thought your mom was Pat Benatar. <laughs> the poll was incidental. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was a poll. She was holding up the ceiling. Very Charles well Brunson was Sorry, a poll. Charles Brunson was a poll so, you know. uh, but that, that, I noticed that uh, several posters for this movie and trailers for it on YouTube mentioned starring Christopher McDonald well <laughs> so the, the older white guy well he wasn't older then but yeah but that's of, yeah Christopher of McDonald's the star no yeah okay right yeah that's how they got people to watch it I that's guess right, yeah. but I, I straight up learned to do the worm because of this movie and I could rock the worm all and like through high school until college when I actually grew boobs. Sorry. Cool. The worm. <laughs> yeah. And you did. We've we we know you did. So, yeah. <laughs> I've seen the picture of you. I used to do like base. all through the hallway at school and stuff. I, I yeah. was weird out. They were know. very handy for resting on your base when you were playing. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um so yeah, breaking is it is it's not one of my top favorites, but it's certainly it's very enjoyable because I love that style of dancing and the, the, the clip with the guy in the broom. That was the Kraftwerk um, Tour de France, I think. The music just killer, absolutely brilliant. Just it wanted to read it. Read out. The only of those uh, dancing kind of movies that they did, they did like a Lombada thing for a while. Yeah. That, was a, that was a brief trend in the yeah. late eighties, early nineties. They kind of jumped on that. Yeah. Um, so they tried to kind of catch like lightning in a bottle mm. a second time. And actually it was a hit. It was the Lombada shit actually, believe it or not, sold. <laughs> but uh but now, it was like kind of not as great the second time around. Actually, yeah. you just remind me of something, Razor Fist. That's where the split came in between Golan and Globus. The fucking yeah. Lombada movies. There was two mm. competing Lombada Lombada movies, one from the old Golan and Globus canon now split up. I think uh if I remember right, yeah, because because Golan he had to take the, the he he made twentieth first century film, so he couldn't take the name Canon. So it was Yoram who ended up getting to keep uh, Canon film. So yeah, yeah, they both made competing Lombada movies. That's what it was. That was where they split. <laughs> yeah, uh, just sorry, Tom. Before we go any further, I got two or three super chats to read or tips. Christian Delorme. It just reminded me. I'm sorry. Uh, no, it's okay, mate. Uh, to, to, we could honestly, we could be here all night. So yeah, <laughs> uh, Christian Dolan took five dollars. Chuck Norris went to a feminist rally. He came back with a sandwich and his shirt ironed. <laughs> <laughs> and this, this is the answer to why Chuck Norris. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just uh, there's a couple more. If you guys will bear with me while I do this. Hold on. Have you have you heard Chuck Norris doesn't wear a condom because there's no such thing as protection from Chuck Norris? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, the Spy Guy tipped five dollars. Thank you, Spy Guy. My review of Chuck Norris movies on my channel is my biggest video ever because Chuck Norris. <laughs> well, you my look at it this way. I was just gonna say, look at it this way. Unlike uh, Charles Bronson, if you come in contact with his dick, you'll die. Chuck Norris, your chances of surviving go up astronomically. <laughs> well, if, if you come into contact with Chuck Norris's dick, you're just immortal now. Uh, yeah, the yeah. chance because he will protect you now. My favorite yeah. one is if, uh, it, it, let's see, if you made a joke about Jada Pinkett uh, Smith, that uh, Will Smith would slap her, not him. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> so Nick, our great, our great buddy Nick Visor. Nick, good to see you, mate. Hi, Nick. It was on. Uh, it was so good to come on to our Sab show last week. Uh, he tipped five dollars. Aussie bit the head off a bat, but not to be outdone. <laughs> Chuck Norris bit the head off Batman. <laughs> <laughs> or was it Bat Tom? He may have bit Bat Tom's head off. I'm not sure. It may have been. <laughs> there, there, uh, there used to be a street named Chuck Norris, but they had to change it because nobody crosses Chuck Norris. <laughs> 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 Yeah, one of my so there's a whole there's a whole, you, there's a whole uh web page oh. and books uh, dedicated oh, to chuck yes. norris jokes in fact i think chuck norris has endorsed a few yeah, so yeah. like and and, and, and what i think's funny about it is his earliest movie he gets killed by bruce lee yeah you know yeah 
and right. this is but that was the the story of that, that is really the, the story of that is really funny because he saw Chuck Norris in a karate competition kicking somebody's ass. Yeah. And uh, uh he was impressed and whatever, and he's like, I think you're amazing. Bruce Lee's like, I think you're absolutely amazing. We're gonna do this, we're gonna do this. He's literally blocking out the fight scene and dialogue. Mm. As yeah, yeah. The the, the, there's like, stories of them. Uh, I mean, you listen to interviews with Chuck Norris, he loves talking about Bruce. Uh right, and he's like yeah, mm -hmm. and he's like, you know, and and you'll be in my movie, and it'll be absolutely fantastic. And he's like, oh, cool. So I'm gonna win then? He's like, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> so so we're not we're not gonna we're not gonna we're not done with Chuck. We'll definitely be talking about Chuck again. Yeah. But just Courtney, I, I, I want to make sure that you get your two favorites <laughs> in. And Barfly, Mickey this Rourke's is Barfly yes. is one of them. I oh, actually had oh, forgotten I'd seen this movie, and then when I watched the trailer, I went, "Yeah, I've mm. seen that on VHS." Mickey Rourke behind the bar, absolutely drink, just drinking the bottle, whiskey straight he, down. He plays, he he's just he, he plays Bukowski well. <laughs> he yeah, plays like what I would imagine, you know, you know, at that age and whatnot. If I was yeah. like, but he also just plays the, uh, you know, I was a bartender and I and I worked in dive bars too. So, and I hung out in dive bars and he just plays that role of the drunk so well. Um, yeah. He's amazing. I yeah, love this was a Mickey Rourke was hot. I mean, I mean, in all sorts of ways he was hot. And, yeah, it's before uh, he got his face messed up. Yeah. 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 And Long uh, time before. an example here of a canon movie that's not just an actioner or, you know, going for that kind of audience. It's, it's Charles Bukowski. It's a serious piece of work. Um, yeah, you know, with great cast, great direction. Um, I mean, one of the biggest stars of the time, Faye Dunaway's yeah. in it. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. I it actually got it actually got fairly good reviews. So if I remember correctly, I think I watched I watched the episode of Siskel and Ebert where they gave it a, a two thumbs up. I think they actually did enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and this is the thing about canon when you don't limit yourself, right? When you actually yeah. are willing to make any kind of movie that you just think is going to make money. Mm -hmm. You're gonna wind up landing on gold at some point. I mean, guys, anime, anime, Japanese anime became a big thing in the 90s. Mm -hmm. The Robotech movie was brought to the United States on VHS by Thanks Canon Film. Canon. Yep. yep. Thanks to Lord. Oh, wow. But yeah, that's right, uh, Razor. It's uh, there's 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 just so much in Canon to unwrap when you really. I did not know this. It. Was like when when I first looked at what like canon was i i saw like blood sport and i was like oh my gosh my father and my brother made me watch i had to watch yeah. that it was always on but, um, <laughs> you see Ch but bukowski's like, an interesting guy because he's not a le lesbian interpretive dance poet no uh, yeah, you know he's know. actually he's no he's, he's a, a drunk man full bore yeah he's, he's like the, the person that said whatever he wanted and still got famous like, like it was awesome is the poetry equivalent of Hemingway in the sense I always thought, um, but yeah, that's a great little movie if you've never seen it. And it's Love Mickey it. Root just definitely see it. dominates that one, absolutely brilliant stuff. Thanks for mentioning that one. And that artwork there is absolutely brilliant. Love that yeah. artwork. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, but I'm sure, we're not going to be done with Chuck, of course. But uh, so we've had a few, uh, a few of us have had a go at um, hang on while I hide this uh, down. I'm showing, I'm showing the um. The curtain behind the curtain. <laughs> Guys, I've got a million links lined up. Um, the uh, I've had a few of my favourites have been mentioned. Uh, Death Wish Two is one, and there's at least one other which we're going to cover. But uh, and Courtney, you've uh, had a few that you've, you've mentioned. John uh, Das Wolf, and what what's your uh, what would you say were your favourites, or what's one of your favourites you would like to talk about? Well. Um... Without going into the films that Canon released and didn't actually make, uh, because you'd be here all day in that case. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I would have to put on my list, um, going back to Chuck Norris, obviously Delta Force we've talked about. Yeah. But I really liked Firewalker. Oh, yeah. That's an interesting yeah. Louis Gossett yeah. Jr., right? Yeah. Louis Gossett yeah. Jr., yeah. Um, and also uh, Runaway Train. Oh, yeah. no. The great John Voight, of course. Absolutely. Number one on yeah. my list. Yep. Another, again, mm -hmm. another heavyweight actor with a great director in a great script. Academy Award stuff, of course. Yeah, so, well, yeah. that that film right there, uh, both uh, him and Eric Roberts were uh, nominated for Best Actor 
and supporting actor for that movie. Yeah. Yeah. Dynamite stuff. Yes. And, a, and not yeah. a movie that it's a great movie you mentioned, John, because it's not a movie that people would necessarily associate with canon. No. And yet, yeah. you know, again, they it's had these, they, they weren't afraid to do heavier stuff, more, I wouldn't call it academic. It's, it's not that kind of movie, but serious stuff alongside action, sex, teen sex comedies, whatever. That's what a studio should do. They should be doing everything. And, they, and from the, no, sorry. Go ahead, Nick. Nope. And from the uh, pre uh, 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 Globus era is uh, from the seventies is uh, Mako. Uh, it was oh, the right. Jaws Jaws of Death. Uh, oh, this came God, out. Yeah. This came out when there was a ton of of because it came out after Jaws, so there's a ton of uh, 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 Jaws, movies Wombies. like that. Yeah, yeah. Orca, but this one was different because. This one, it was it's it, it was kind of a sci-fi premise or fantasy present pres, uh, premise because the guy gets a medallion that lets him communicate with sharks. Oh, and yeah. uh, the thing is, though, the whole movie is actually pro shark. Yeah, <laughs> like a lot of the other ones, and you you rooting for the sharks, and you know it's just a, it was just different than the. Shark movies of the the time. Sure, and of course, uh, Chuck Norris, if he'd been in that, would not have needed a medallion. He could talk to the no, he could talk to him normally. <laughs> but yeah, this is Firewalker, which uh, I have seen on VHS a long time ago. I don't recall too much about it. I know it's John Reese Davis, isn't it? Which is, is interesting. Yep. But what a great cast! And I think there's a great uh, still shot of this where he's lying in the desert, desert, and he's got a bottle of water lying next to him, and he's obviously. Uh, in trouble. <laughs> but look at this. This is cool. They all they always have a certain visual production style, no matter who the director. I found a lot of canon movies. Great practical effects, well choreographed fights. Yep. Not super slick in the way that you know, maybe a John Wick is now. So you and you always them. went through the window in slow yeah. motion. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Has any, anyone else seen this one recently? I've, right. I've seen it within the past couple of years. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, it's not bad, but it's also at the same time it's kind of weird seeing Chuck Norris in something that's a quasi comedy. Yeah. 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 yeah it's got true. a lot of laughs in it. That's true. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks, Union, for uh, pointing out that there are indeed seven over on the Rumble stream, five on Odyssey. Uh, just checking in with those guys, Connor B, Doppelgamer, Union Amateur Strategists over there. Really uh, appreciate you uh, being over on Odyssey, where you can speak a little more freely. I uh, can't highlight those chats very easily, unfortunately. That's the only thing. Uh, and Rumble, we've got Bill Khan and the Union and Ick Thomason over there. Great. We're, uh, we're not ignoring you. Again, I can't highlight those chats very well, but uh, thanks for being over there too. Um, so yeah, Firewalker, anything else, John, that you we haven't mentioned so far that you're... You well, there's stuff be... that I like that most people would think weren't good movies, like the the Gore series. The um, Al Gore yeah. series. No, the... Well, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah they're good I, MST3K fodder, if nothing else. Right. Yeah. 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 But, uh, you know, they, there was just so much. I mean, it's just hard I'd, to pick. I'd just like to, you know, thank Al Gore for paving the way for General, Jennifer Lawrence to, you know, admitting to inventing the Internet. Yeah. yeah. Well, they, not only did she invent Internet, she invented making movies. It's true, yeah. There's a picture of her on Harold Lloyd in 1906. In Hollywood. Yeah, but before, <laughs> before women were even allowed in movies, or on the Internet for that matter. And, you know, yeah. it's so stunning and brave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's yeah. actually a talking daguerreotype, incidentally. But she, she, yeah, she, she creates she, movies. She's really. the first etching. Yes, yes. <laughs> and 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 the caves in France, the, the cave paintings they founded when they just went in a few weeks ago and studied them a bit closer, there was a. It was signed by Jennifer Lawrence. Oh, absolutely! No, no, she's <laughs> she's actually scrawled on a cave wall in berries and pigeon shit, which explains the smell. <laughs> But She's the yeah, alpha and omega of but, entertainment. But Chuck Norris did play her in a movie, so. Yeah. <laughs> I think so, they, uh, I think they found a uh, footprint of Jennifer Lawrence next to the dinosaurs. 
so there's uh, uh you know what I, I would give chuck uh chuck Norris, you know what i would give jennifer lawrence if i was to rank her uh in the can pantheon of movie stars i would give her this score zero point zero <laughs> so uh we mentioned the movie earlier if you don't mind me going back to one of my favorites it was fifth on my list of top five which is very hard to do a top five kind of but uh, uh i'm going to try and call up on screen the images of that particular one so my top five info this would be life force <laughs> Uh, yeah. a good one. Yeah. Life Force number three on mine. Yeah, is number five on my list. Uh, I fucking love they this movie. Them. They waited. It's to now me. I mean, I was a big sci-fi fan anyway. Always have been all my life. So this fair. was right up my Maybe. street. Yeah. As the actress said to the bishop. From body sort of like body, alien from meets life, life, species. From man to yeah, a little bit. Exactly. And just. Life. I love the the whole. The way we saw the scene in the montage with the the life force being drained out of the doctor. That mm -hmm. stuff, those effects, I thought were fantastic. Yeah. And what this is about eighty five, yeah, nineteen eighty five. Pretty good, you know. Now I know we did Terminator and some other stuff. But so to me, does that mean the face hugger seduces you? Uh, in a sense, <laughs> in a sense. I probably got oh, watch for the nudity that? in this one. Yeah, was that, that girl Jean never Luke has hard. I on. just saw there. Right. I think that, that was, was Patrick what? Stewart. Oh, he is. Yes, he's in this. Yeah, he's in this. Yeah, I think that girl's Bush actually got a co-credit. <laughs> <laughs> should have. Should have. It should have. But actual fact, the, the the box, the cover for it, there's a, one of the copies of the VHS cover that she's topless on, and you have to watch it for YouTube that you find the one that that's been covered well, they up. Use they used the movie poster for an excellent uh heavy metal album that i highly recommend by a band called crimson glory oh crimson um, glory wow. that cover was used for uh the the, the second album uh, that they released i'm pretty yeah. sure that um canon movies and stuff have inspired a lot of metal absolutely yeah you're bound to have um, canon movies are the reason why I was glad I had my own VCR in high school. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Uh, yeah. Uh, with I a pause it, button. Boy, is he, is he walking in there with three more bottles of Lubriderm? What's going on there? You <laughs> <laughs> must have really dry skin. Well, they did a few um, softcore porn things, but they did a lot of teen, erotic, erotic, teen sex comedies. Oh um, yeah. They well they were kind of at the forefront of the in the early eighties with some of those, actually. The They were the kings the, of necessary unnecessary oh, nudity. That's gonna get us taken down. That's <laughs> oh, the reason why I said that's where the three the high school the DNA uh, and cancel. And this must be the cancel. British trailer. Hello. We're done. <laughs> Sorry. Odyssey and Ron Mole will still hear YouTube. You're you done. just have to go back and fix put little um, oh, we're, across good. Across we're here. Yeah, yeah, fix it right. no. but yeah what was the so, so they had the the well Lemon Popsicle was the Israeli one that, that Globus uh, Gordon yeah. Globus made. I think they remade right. it. The American one was um Bubblegum. Bubble gum. What was the other one? Last American Virgin. That was last it. American yeah, Virgin. Yeah. Last American and that was Virgin, like eighty. Yeah. That was like eighty two. That's a like that was pretty early on in that whole phenomenon. So they were sort of in yeah. The it was during that. the Porkies kind of phenomenon. Yeah, yeah. yeah they were right in the Last American Virgin. Holy laugh. shit! That's a hell of a video. To, like, so over there. I was trying to get all the VHS covers of the ones I liked most, and so as you can see, this here she's cut off, but on some of the foreign uh, versions, she's topless completely on them so um, i'm surprised the british one didn't allow that because they're pretty good with that stuff in britain because this is a british one i think um <laughs> it was for educational purposes, it was educational purposes. <laughs> it's, it's all educational you know somebody biology uh, class you know yeah but uh, uh, peter it's firth nice. great actor frank finley a fantastic british actor that did a lot of great british tv roles some of them in well, horror movies and period dramas um so you know if, if, i Tobe Hooper, of course. I mean, wasn't great. wasn't Patrick Stewart in that? I think Patrick Stewart was in here, but he's like, 
He's not even an and Patrick Stewart uh -huh. on this poster. But also, screenplay by Dan O'Bannon. Oh, wow. I mean, what's not to like? Mm -hmm. Speaking Some of, of the practical uh... effects in it are really cool. That that one clip you see where the life force is being sucked out of the doctor that got too close to the body. It, that that puppet is really cool, man. It's really neat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, the, the, that's a fantastic scene, which is why I wanted to get it in the, the montage. Mm -hmm. No, I absolutely love this one. Um we also we talked about Death Wish to we showed that stuff, but I guess if if it's all about me, yeah, the Soul Assassin mm -hmm. says uh, Patrick Stewart's first man kiss, the first probably, of many with uh, if we include Ian McKellen, probably not his last though. You know oh I mean? no. Um, yeah, that's well. That, yeah, I don't quite recall that part, but I do know he was in it. But uh... and life, uh, life force. Before we move on, we should probably mention like it was their attempt to sort of get a big prestige sci-fi movie that was considered like legitimate. And yeah. then of course they put a naked chick on every frame of the <laughs> the fucking movie, oh, and they wind up making there you go. <laughs> but, don't, but don't you the, find the Razor... version of two thousand one? Yeah, wasn't this the beginning of a strange relationship with Tobe Hooper too? It was. Yeah, they they had a few. Well, hey, it was the misses. early eighties. Boobs were still legal back then. Well, because right. I think wasn't this the movie he did for them, and yeah. then he wanted to do. Uh, well, or was this gonna, one of the movies he wanted to do? I can't was, remember now. He did this one, and then he was going to do the. I think it was the Pinocchio robot. It was called the robot, but it was a version of Pinocchio. Yeah, he was and meant then, to do that. But and then, then the the one he wanted to do was Invaders from Mars and Texas Chain Texas Chainsaw Massacre was one of his trade offs. Yeah, but and Texas then they freaked the fuck out over uh, Invaders from Mars, and I think that was the end of their relationship, if I remember right. Because they had to have a, a bunch of that fixed, if I remember in post. Texas Chainsaw Massacre Two was a canon, but I'm not sure the original yeah. was. No, the original, no, the original was, not. was not. They it was kind of a death wish situation where they bought the sequel, expected yeah. it to be really, and then it was really different yeah. from the first one. And yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that's fun. why I love it, and it's one of my favorite canon films. There's one of them right there. That's, Texas Chainsaw Massacre Two is one of the greatest well, fucking should... sequels ever. Period. Hands down. End of discussion. <laughs> Well, we'll probably yeah. should talk about that one right now, then. So let me just call up the no, poster for that. Yeah, but that's not canon. Uh, let me hide my screen. Canon did release a lot of films that they didn't produce, like Highlander. Oh, um, you mentioned you've, you've mentioned that one too early. Well, still, I'm just saying. <laughs> see, I'm not even sure if we can count those. That's the thing. Yes, we can. Highlander. Well, they were just canon movie. Can Is anybody it? here do a Scottish accent? Oh, I'm <laughs> Gee, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. No, uh, I didn't he can. No, no, I can't do it. He's a break. Hang on. I know somebody who can. It's the quickening. <laughs> <laughs> Juan Sanchez via Lopez Ramirez. This, yes, the Egyptian Spaniard with the Scottish accent. I, I, you know, I should Spanish have, peacock. When I knew when when Razor joined the stream, I actually intended to play this clip, but I didn't have time. You. My name is Pussy Galore. I must be dreaming. Purely for that me, I must her. be dreaming. I love her. <laughs> is that <laughs> you? I'm not suggesting Razor looks like Honor Blackman, but you know. A, <laughs> I don't know that was. That's you as Bond. <laughs> that was me as John Connery. <laughs> well, I do come from the same area as him. I was, you know, he, he was born and brought up about two or three miles from me. So and I and oh, I have I, I know people who knew him. So yeah. and you do have a similar have have a Good he's question this, in the chat for you. He's, he's I'll get yeah I'll just get that. But he, he was not from the Highlands. He's from the Stockbridge area of Edinburgh. So that's good. Um, yeah, there you go. Here we go. I'm trying to get to the chat. Who's got it? What can oh, Chevin do with an American, American accent? accent? <sighs> she said, "When I lived in Dallas, I was getting better at doing a Texas accent, but I've lost it all now." Y all y'all. <laughs> All y'all. That's <laughs> mayonnaise. All y'all. <laughs> all y'all. Louisiana. Do Don't ever do that again. Uh, hey, 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 hello. I could do an Australian one better. It's truth. I'm from the Northeast. Like yeah. kangaroos. Anyway. At Charlie least I'm the only one here who can do a convincing New Englander accent. 
Well, you're, well yeah. that's, that's not convincing I if you're born that way. Oh, I don't know. I can pack my candy yard if I get to the pet. Oh, Why would you pack a car in Harvard Yard? You're going to get a fucking ticket. Yeah. You can have, have a I'm fucking heart awesome. attack. Yeah. Razor, you're you live in Arizona, but is that your original origin? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I don't I don't have a Arizona's weird with accents. He's, there are some people run around sounding like they're from Texas, and then there are people who sound it's like kind of like Wisconsin, I imagine. Yeah, I'd say your accent is fairly right neutral. I was going to say, I thought Arizona didn't really have an accent. Kind of like I've lived in Colorado for 17 years, and my Philly accent is kind of neutralized because yeah. nobody has an accent here. You don't well, I, like you and family. my family's originally. Oh, well, I from talk to my family. Too. Yeah, my family's originally from Pennsylvania, so my my you know parents oh. have like they they say things like window and things like that. Oh, like, oh, they have that yeah, kind they, of like phone and home. You get the inflection. Yeah, 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 like yeah. That. They they go and wash things. Yeah. Oh, so, um, they're from. Are they from like Reading or Lancaster? <laughs> Erie, Erie, actually, yeah. Oh, Erie. Okay, so they're. I tell people all the time I'm a transplanted Yankee. My parents are oh, uh, Maine and Massachusetts, and I was born and raised in Louisiana. So, but, but you know, yeah, the, so you do not sound like a New England. No, I know I don't. Virginia now, I'm never going to talk like it. But Joe, you know that area in Nolens in New Orleans where they all speak <laughs> with a Brooklyn accent? Yes. That is the weird. Have you ever seen that, you guys? That place is crazy. There's an area of New Orleans, and they all speak with a Brooklyn accent. It's the most bizarre thing. Look, you want to have a good time? Just go down there. I'd say my uh, my favorite time to go down there is for the jazz festival. New Orleans is a great city. I've always wanted to go. Cities you can walk around and not worry about getting mugged on the city streets uh, uh, at three o'clock in the the morning because that's. you know, so, but uh, you're going to hear all kinds of accents down there, man. Uh, but but the strangest thing is when you act, actually talk to a, a pure Cajun, uh, a French Cajun down there. Dude, you can't understand. That, it's like listening to a Scotsman that just got <laughs> oh, off the plane. Come on, you can't understand a again. word they're saying, He's man. a break. Yep. No, so, I will say, uh, like, it's one funny, of the coolest but... things in America is to come up to Salem, Massachusetts for Halloween. Yep. So, it, so Pope, yeah. could you do, <coughs> Pope, I want you to do me a favor. Could you say the name of the place that boats leave from, where a ship would would dock? What the harbor? The harbor. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he doesn't what, pronounce his R's. What's yeah. the bit out of the front of the house that you put a chair on and you sit and enjoy the outdoors? It's a patch. What, the patch. The patch. <laughs> what? Get off my fucking patch. <laughs> It's a Harvard bar. <laughs> so we got so he mentions the uh, Michigan, uh, the Upper Peninsula. I had a roommate oh, from Michigan, and I always thought she was saying yeah. UPA, like UPA, yeah, the Upers, like the letter A. <laughs> I get them. Yeah, so we got the Upers around here, don't you know? Yeah. Oh yeah, you do, Tom. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, I speak you. I speak you. But what is it about the yeah. northern, like that whole area of the United States, like like the like North Dakota, and what? They're almost more Canadian than Canadian. Yeah, they are. It is. It's <laughs> like this. <laughs> it's where the accent really comes from, probably, and I think it's yeah. largely because of uh, huge swaths of Germanic and Czechoslovakian and other cultures made their way here for some reason they moved to get away from the cold and snow and bullshit so they moved to the places that have the cold and snow and bullshit yeah right (laughs) yeah well i I thought it was a a lot of swedes which is why uh like minnesota and swedes and swedes too yeah yeah yeah, although we have like like i live in an area that's known as the czechoslovakian capital of that area so like yeah like we have a great kind of mixture of a lot of that crap i I just want to call out uh, some more tips and thank you to all for this. This this is all, all these tips are going towards me in 2023 building the channel and improving my studio setup. I got a new chair coming because I was killing my back, new desk setups, all sorts. So thank you very much for all of that. Really appreciate it. So we can bring you the entertainment we know you want. Uh, Critical Orc Theory tipped $6.82. I saw Bruce Lee beat Chuck Norris once. That's how we ended up with Chuck Norris the White. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, see, that was his was uh, transformation. That yeah. Yeah, that's really <laughs> awesome. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, there's a couple more. Let me uh, get those. But yeah, that's um, this is all. I'm very grateful to you all for, for supporting like this. Um, yeah. I'm not monetized. So it does. Well, help to be me. real, let, let's like that's possibly not even kidding. All kidding aside, that's probably where a lot of Chuck Norris's notoriety came from. Is he was one of the few guys in those movies to really give Bruce a fight. Yes. yes. Right. Yes. So he had mm -hmm. that kind of gravitas. And then when we lost Bruce, I mean, what are you going to hey, do? You're gonna go to war, that's legit too. Like Chuck was actually a hell of a martial artist. And so here's yeah. So here's a question. If Bruce Lee lives, how many canon films does he make? Uh, well, he films. Probably he's in no every you. single fucking one of them. In fact, yeah. they make sure that there's a part for him in every one of them. Yes, absolutely. I'm, I'm pretty sure American Ninja would look a little different if Bruce Lee was still alive. Oh, yeah. Well, then we probably wouldn't have had a man we haven't talked about yet who deserves it. Uh, a Japanese gentleman by the name of Sho Kosugi, who is mm. basically the ninja equivalent of Bruce Lee, an incredible martial artist, uh, and certainly an actor, uh, but but an incredible martial artist. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and went and from made being the great films in in the eighties in that kind of genre, not just Enter the Dragon, where he's the antagonist, or. Um, he was he was also of course in the sequel re, re, or sorry, enter the dragon enter the ninja, enter the ninja um, and then, yeah, and then yeah. of course revenge of the ninja which i think is even better where he's the protagonist i did a rageaholic cinema of that one but he also made a fantastic one called pray for death and a that few others great. there were Remember oh, that one. and there were yeah. some great ninja movies that show kosugi was in in the 80s well hold <laughs> that thought because i do want to call up a couple of those posters that you mentioned them does it, anybody uh, remember oh, gonna get to them. Yeah. how back in the 80s you various channels would have their kung fu theaters usually on saturday or sunday some channel actually had a kung fu theater type show with show kosugi as yes it was like ninja what is it ninja it might, theater have been, might have been ninja that? theater yeah i've seen some clips and of that on it's youtube and it's guys, like, i I don't know if it's still on there, but like a year ago when I still had Amazon, uh, Amazon Prime had it on there. It's like really? Shokotsuki's Ninjutsu Theater or something like that. They had full episodes of it. So I wasn't we'll just... so old on Up All Night stuff. That reminds me of the host type thing. Uh, yeah. So, so and here's where you get excited when a streaming service has MXC. <laughs> I'm just going to touch on these. Uh, I've got a handful of, of more of the uh, tips to do, so I'll just touch on those. And I want to go back to Sho Kasugi. Um, your Muslim uncle, a great friend of the channel, wonderful guy, um, tipped $2. Love to see a full canon trailer done by this panel. Great voices on here. We well, yeah, do have a quite good wide, wide range of accents and voices, so, you know... <laughs> That's, that's very possible we could do I that. actually have a few trailer voices. Yeah. Tom and his own could probably do it. Tom could do it all by himself. <laughs> it's like, it, <laughs> yeah, it depends on what you want. <laughs> do you want in a world? In right. a world. Don't, don't Devlo <laughs> it's a little bit more softer, but it One asks man. questions. It's pondering. One man stood alone. <laughs> Christian Delorme. So uh, Courtney, go ahead. Movie phone? I was, I was just right. Oh, movie oh, phone. Yeah. 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 Hello, Hello. Welcome, welcome to, to movie, movie phone. phone. So, and don't forget <laughs> Peter Cullen, of course, who also yeah. did movie trailers in his Optimus Prime voice. From the company that brought my favorite, thing, my favorite part Optimus of movie phone, Prime. which nobody uses anymore, but and my favorite part of movie phone was when it would be like. Welcome to Movie Phone, which brought to you by Blank and Power ninety two FM. And then it'd be like, <laughs> and then all of a sudden it would jump into the trailer and be like, "You better get off that mountain!" Like fucking, it would just immediately jump into the trailer, and you could never understand it because of the quality of the call. Oh, it was just a bunch man. of jumbled noise. <laughs> it, it was such a glorious <laughs> lost age where like the internet hadn't taken over yet, but everyone still mm -hmm. had like you know dial phones and oh, stuff like that. Well, and that was also the era that was like the death of the radio ad for movies, right? Like, and yeah. that's what Razor yeah. started. Talk about because what they would do on the movie phone is they would literally just play the audio from the trailer. It's like there's a reason why they didn't do that for 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 radio ads because you can't just 
play the audio from the trailer, it's a bunch of fucking noise. You you actually have to have somebody set it up or you have a little bit, yeah. you know, or whatever. It, it, it it's so it's it's not the same animal. So they should have done similar for that. Like that thing was a doomed just from the right, start. It's kind of like a, the, the, the closest radio thing radio you got to it now is the uh I've heard book ads on the radio that sound a lot like the old trailers did. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, I just want to touch on these. Um, Christian Delorme, once again, my friend, uh, tipped five dollars. Another reason Chuck Norris is great: he gave up acting to tend to his sick, bedridden wife, and he fed her red turn and stayed by um, his bedside. And I salute him for it. Bronson did that as well. Yeah, yeah. Bronson did that too. <laughs> Actually, we should talk about that. In in the late eighties, a Jill Ireland came down with cancer, mm. and uh, he actually just to keep her working and distracted. Basically, they did the whole assassination movie. Like he demanded that she be in it. She was very mm. very ill at the time when she was making that movie. Basically, just did it so she would have something to do, which is really really. Mm. <laughs> Pretty incredible, actually, for a, for an actor. I mean, because he knew he he knew he could ask for any movie he wanted from Canon Films and anyone who could be cast mm -hmm. in it. Mm -hmm. so. Another actor who did the, the when his wife passed away was Rick Moranis. Basically, gave up his yeah. career to look after his yeah. kids and raise them. Yep. Yeah, that's why he doesn't yeah. care. Yeah. That's why he dropped right off the map yeah. at the height of his powers. Yeah, yeah, yeah he, he did a bunch of movies real quick. Yeah. cashed in and went and uh, retired outside well, we had, of doing some small yeah. bits and here and there as far as like was for honey, stuff. A, a, a honey, honey I blew up the kids or something like that what yeah, we, we blew talked up about our, ourselves the, or whatever it was yeah. we talked about that in the strange brew stream that we did a few weeks ago which uh, and he I got paid like eight million dollars for that or something like that yeah, honey we shrunk yeah. ourselves i think it was yeah, yeah. so fair play to those guys you know sorry courtney i interrupted i think canadian spider-man is rick moranis i was just throwing that out there they yeah, they do actually. Having met the uh, Canadian Spider-Man in person, there's there's a certain synchronicity there. Maybe they're the same I guy. <laughs> well, so, you got to uh, take your hats off, uh, hat off to guys that are willing to do that. I mean, especially when you look at some of the things that these actors today will demand. You know, oh, and, and these guys are narcissistic. They are, yeah, dude, yeah not even, exactly. Not even it out there for somebody else, right? You yeah, know. not even today. That was a thing that happened even back then. I mean, the, I hear about yeah. the making. Speaking of Bronson, making the movie The Magnificent Seven, and uh, Steve McQueen, giant prima donna oh. that he is. Steve yeah. McQueen had this huge writer, and everyone hated his fucking guts because he was mm -hmm. just a douche on set. <laughs> they would literally make everybody else on the movie would make prank calls to Steve McQueen's hotel room while they were like, they would just fuck with him <laughs> constantly. Don did not yeah, yeah, yeah. a douche. He is a douche. He was a douche. Yeah, he was Thank a you douche. for that. Prickly, <laughs> prickly fucker, uh, Steve McQueen. I guess it's just coming up as being an orphan as a kitty. You know, real prickly hard edged him, you know. He's so handsome though. Yeah. Oh. Hey, hey. Hey, I, I'm handsome and I don't act like If that. I only you are handsome. digested uh, entertainment from people that I admired, I'd never watch or listen to any. Right? No I shit. Mean, no, you got to separate. And, and yeah. Speaking of Steve McQueen, he was actually one of the, one of the uh, stars in the first It's Only Talking Roll of the movies we did with uh, Towering Inferno. Yeah, we oh, did yeah. a great Towering yeah. Inferno yeah. stream. Oh, check it out. Yeah. New, new subscribers, please go back and check some of our previous It's Only Talking Rolls. We did a fantastic Towering Inferno when I intend to do more disaster movies. Uh, I mean, disaster for sure. So that. why not do disaster movies? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm all in on that. Yeah, well, I, I have a disaster movie. Well, if you'll allow me to uh, revert <laughs> the uh, conversation back to Ken, and I'll embarrass myself even more by saying another one of my favorites. <coughs> Go for it. I've always had a soft spot for the Masters of the Universe. Go figure, of course, being uh, oh, who I am. There's nothing but, wrong uh, with that, man. I mean, wasn't that the that. first time that, that that story was brought to the screen with the old great Dolph Frank Lundgren? Frank Langella. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. awesome. Mm -hmm. Just I'll read this out just yeah. briefly. Uh, Trucker Rob. Thank you, Trucker Rob. We love our truckers. Tipped says, truckers, and, truckers out there looking after us and there's a bunch of mother truckers in here on this stream um <laughs> trucker rob tipped 682 <laughs> just cause and i like just cause you know so thank you my friend well and of course the story for masters is infinitely more interesting 
So go for Masters. Let's talk Masters. I actually, you know, just but briefly before we do that, and I do have a couple. Uh, let's and uh, let me show. We talked about. Show, I don't want to move away from show. Pray from death. Yeah. Okay, so pray yes. from death isn't a canon movie. It's not a canon movie, but a no. fucking awesome movie. Very, very cool. He did he did just a series of kick ass movies yep. in the eighties. A lot of them with canon. But he basically show Kosugi was for the ninja genre what Bruce Lee had been for the yeah. Kung Fu genre. And it yeah. cannot be overstated that the ninja genre was massive in the nineteen eighties. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh yeah. 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 And I don't, I don't see- think Frank Miller has a career without these movies. <laughs> no, yeah. not at and all. And you said earlier, Razor, that, that Ninja Enter the Ninja was probably the first time that Ninja had been used in a, a mainstream US released movie. And there was then hundreds of movies used that name. Tons, especially out of yeah. Italy. There was a huge ninja exploitation yeah. kind of thing that came out of it because Italy's always like that. Once there's something popular, they make nine billion of it until you're sick and tired. Of right, yeah. it. And they were putting a ninja on things that had nothing to do with ninjas, like you know, <laughs> true teen sex comedies with the word ninja. <laughs> well, in America, yeah. right? Uh, you, you know, Hallmark movies had ninja on them. <laughs> so what you're saying, and of course, and of course, this culminates in what another what massive the the first phenomenon, mm-hmm. 80s and 90s phenomenon, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which is, <laughs> oh, which is almost like a canon movie, movie they never made, right? It is, right? Basically, uh, yeah, because because it's derived from Daredevil. Yeah. Daredevil, the Frank Miller Daredevil stuff was basically just this. It was this in a in a superhero comic, and mm-hmm. uh, and then that just winds up filtering that's amazing just trickle down creativity it winds up yeah. uh, becoming this huge franchise and the best selling toy line i think still of all time <laughs> and because, yeah, he, yeah. he gets I, I, i'm not sure yeah. which grown adult could really like teenage mutant ninja tunnels at all. <laughs> who, who could well like there's a direct line to all of this of course <laughs> Uh, the ninja craze fed into to that business like uh, razor yeah. razor was saying and then uh, you know it was the masters of the universe film that made it yes. almost impossible for the Ninja Turtle movie to happen mm-hmm. until Bob, Robert Shea's like, I don't know, what do they need? Golden Harvest. They want like $6 million because they need need some money to finish off this Ninja Turtle movie they're making. And he's like, I don't know. And then Sarah Richard goes, oh, the Ninja Turtles? My kid loves them. I got them all the figures for Christmas. He's like, oh, yeah. give it to him then. <laughs> that's how it happened that's exactly how it fucking happened because he's like he he kind of knew what the ninja turtles were but like everybody in town turned it down they didn't want to touch it with a 10-foot pole because masters of the universe was a huge disaster for canon films and mattel and like i was just about to say earlier the the story behind the making of that film and it's never made sequel that became cyborg are infinitely more interesting than the movie itself of course yeah. But like the, the this movie was where we started to see some of the shenanigans come into play here and where the separation between Golan and Globus started to happen. And I can't remember the lawyer's name who came in, but he came into the picture and he really started to shake shit up because it was more before that. Like Golan was kind of like the the idea guy. He he knew all the he, he was a director himself. He was a right. You know, he want, he had all the big ideas. Yeah. And Yoram was the guy who came up with all the cash to pay for those big ideas. Oh, the money man. <laughs> the yeah, money man. Was, so, yeah. So that's why they worked so well together. And then when you added a third component in there, who was basically funneling money to other means. Was it let's Giancarlo say. Peretti? Was it Peretti? Was, was he pulling a John DeLorean? Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say he had a lot of uh, mob ties. And <laughs> Peretti, I think. Not only that, but guys... And it wasn't just that, like they they had a series yeah. of bombs that happened. They like, did. Right in well, gosh, nobody talks about this. They didn't even talk about this in the Canon Films documentary, but the Roman Polanski film Pirates, which was when Roman Ooh. Polanski was hit with the accusations mm-hmm. that basically sidelined Roman Polanski. That was a Canon film, and they mm-hmm. and it was a historical epic. So they fired money at it from a from a cannon uh, they, they cannon. absolutely they they flushed so many millions of dollars down the drain on a movie by a guy who it turns out was a rapist right, uh, right. horrible horrible sure yeah and that's, that's part of the therapist? problem 
Yeah, yeah he was a therapist. Yeah. Golan was like spending more money than they had, right? Like he and and they would get money for movies and they would spread it out. Like he always had this mentality of why would I spend thirty million dollars on one movie when I can make 30, 30 movies for one million dollars? Yeah. Well, that mentality mm-hmm. kind of changed after a while when you started to get a taste of more and more money, and that's where I brought up like uh, Electric Boogaloo and all that shit earlier because that kind of money brought into the company caused them to get get bigger aspirations and make these bigger movies and make deals like with Stallone where they had an ex- what was it a three picture exclusive deal with him that they also got it in on Cobra with I know this is more your area Razor Fist but like yeah. they paid him like 12 million fucking dollars flat out like <laughs> And that was a lot and, of money. And though. those movies were big. I mean, those movies were big, but it wasn't like it wasn't uh Rocky big, right? Like Cobra. And they weren't wasn't. generating exactly. They weren't generating the, the 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 kind of money coming back on their cheaper budget films, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So just briefly, uh another couple of tips to read out before we move on to the magnificence that is Dolph Lundgren. Uh, Canonius Schlock and Treasure. Schluck and treasure. Schluck and treasure. There's a Scotchman that's very good to share. (laughs) Tipped $5. The canon of Orban is still the greatest, never to be outdone. Buckaroo Banzai, a close second. I wish I'd thought of Buckaroo Banzai earlier because it would have been in my top five. I'll I'll make it an honorary top five member of my top five, even though it isn't. Because I love that movie. Well, uh, see, and that's where I was confused on movies that they distributed or, or they uh, actually produced in yeah, the business. And I didn't think that one counted, but clearly it does. And I wish I'd counted it because it's definitely a neglected classic. Yeah. Oh well, God, we didn't even mention. Well. Uh, we didn't even mention the Superman film. They, they oh, oh my God, to it yet. I was getting to? to it actually. That lead. <sighs> this movie actually leads me to that because we'll, we'll come to it. Yeah, because the practices that they started to do here, or at least they probably did before this, but really started to show, is where they would take money out of one picture and funnel it into others, and that's where Superman 4 was a prime example of that happening. But the same thing happened here. Um, Now, depending on who you ask, the story differs, okay? Because at this point, Mattel was involved financially, but... But Mattel swears up and down they didn't give any money to Canon up front. But Canon, the, the story that we've heard in several reiterations through the canon history is that Mattel did give them money and the deal was Mattel was putting up half the money for the budget and Canon was putting up half the money in the budget and when Canon went and blew through <laughs> the first half of the budget they're like yeah we're out of money and Mattel's like well you're supposed to put the other half up and they're like yeah we don't have it <laughs> wow and they're like well what are we going to do they're like well if we want a movie you're going to have to give us the other half of the budget <laughs> wow Mm. And Netflix <laughs> didn't exist yet. So. <laughs> yeah. And so Mattel panicked, and the rumor is they paid for not only this movie, but movie that money that was funneled into other, other projects. Oh, so wow. <laughs> so <laughs> that's incredible stuff if you think about it. I mean, that, that's it's highway robbery. I know, but, but you just I'm going to put this gun film. to your head. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you just watch the film, I mean, all the money's on well, the screen, th- isn't it? Is yeah, it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> Actually, all the money's in the me. oil that they oil the Dolph with, I think. Uh, yeah. 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 And again, it all depends on who that. you believe, because Mattel's <laughs> version of events is basically, they, they just, their version, the only difference is they weren't stupid enough to give Canon money up front, but I'm like, they mm. certainly didn't pay for it for, by themselves, because we know how these fuckers work. Yeah. We love them for it, right? Like, that's... <laughs> <laughs> they ain't so, gonna pay for nothing themselves. The fact that most of the budget went into the writers' noses has nothing to do with the final product. I'm sure. Yeah. Well, well, as I said, I think a lot of it had to do with money. Some money deals that had to do with that lawyer more so than anything. Because at least when it was Golan and Globus, the money was being funneled from one movie project into another. There was another place where money was going here uh that that's the other things mm, other yeah, places uh, wondering that's another I, I, dude i <laughs> i don't know if you've seen this clip or whatever there was behind the scenes video of uh Manachem golan he was being pitched a movie by a writer or, or a producer or something and they're like and this is deep in the heart of the 80s like right at, at mm. canon's height and he's literally on like a speakerphone call and he's like, the guy on the other line is like, all right, here's what I got for you. Explosions, death, fist, 
Hicks, <laughs> Chuck Norris, and literally Menachem before he's even finished talking is like, send me the clip. <laughs> <laughs> is that the clip where he's in the blue jumpsuit or whatever it's the pit. i can't remember but i put it in i think one it's of in the one documentary so if i'm not mistaken yeah oh my god uh, some just even let him yeah. finish talking just send me the script <laughs> that's the way yeah. to do it though that's the way to yeah. do it uh speaking of throwing money uh critical orc theory this is a good one I actually tipped five dollars and two cents and there's that conversion to canadian again um, which in Canada, Canadian money, that's worth three Nuka Cola caps. Actually, um, <laughs> if if you ever get Razor on Midnight's Edge, Tom, you have to introduce introduce him in trailer voice. <laughs> well, now, we've had him on uh, quite thought, a few times, but from here on out, he I will. On, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure Razor's mm -hmm. been on Midnight's Edge in the morning. I've even been on it once. One from the desert, so that was <laughs> yeah. Razor shows up when Razor can. Uh, yeah. I send him links from time to time, and uh, I, yeah. I'm sure we'll see him again at some oh, point. I, well, I certainly hope so. Being uh, one of the mods and part of that team, the well, scenes, we've got some awesome. Conan material and some other stuff coming up that I'm sure he'll eventually want to oh, chime yeah, in on. So, yeah, oh, yes. you can do a bit of that trailer voice now, just do it now. For He's the man, the myth, God fucking speed. It's Razor Fist. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that, that was good. I wish Someone I'm going to clip, clip that. And I'm use clipping that, as a that fucking emoji from here on out. I'm clipping That's that amazing. shit. In fact, you, could you do this one? The fuck you! I was right. Fuck you! I was right. Fuck you! I <laughs> I think I earned that on my own, uh, with, considering what I had to tweet out yesterday. But yeah, I think that might have been something to do with the last Jedi, but I can't remember. Yes, yeah, so that is an amazing. Um, it's a meme. Uh, I've, I've seen it many, many times. I it's love a, that one. Yeah, a brilliant, brilliant piece. Yeah. So of, thank uh, you, art. Critical Orc Theory, for that. I remember I the day that came out? Yeah. Uh, yes, exactly. Um, I got a couple on the Odyssey side, so it's hard again to show those on screen. I will try and. Uh, copy those and put them in here and then I think we'll be up to date with, with that stuff. So just bear with me. Um, it's a pity my co-executive producer can't do this, but never mind. Uh, I might be able to now. <laughs> I, I, uh, I'm just I put together an impromptu ghetto cooling solution and I'm it seems to be working. So let me see if I can open uh, that. Obviously, so... tab for <laughs> but to jump <laughs> past the first film, out. of course, when it was an astronomical disaster at the box office, uh, they they had a second film regardless of that fact, and Dolph Lundgren's like, fuck this noise, I'm out. So they had another <laughs> like guy cast as He-Man, and that movie ended up getting scrapped, but they didn't, as you know, Golan never lets anything go to waste. So he yeah. repurposed that script and a bunch of the sets and costumes into the movie Cyborg right. with... <laughs> With, which is uh, a crazy uh, story Dale. like in general yeah and it's amazing how they so they wind up with one well first off you you have to start with van damme was on supposed to be involved in predator they wind up letting yes. him go and he's it's clear he's going to be the next big thing regardless so they're going to make him happen anyways so canon gets a hold of john clad van damme starts working on this movie they had an original director who worked on it and he liked the movie but it was they get the rushes back. They're watching this movie and they're like, this is an incoherent mess. Like, this is total dog shit. Um, what are we going to do? They literally hand the movie over to be edited by Jean-Claude Van Damme. <laughs> he literally <laughs> edits his own fucking movie. And basically he just cuts out all the shit that doesn't involve him roundhouse kicking people. And it turns into cyborg. <laughs> and we're going to well, get and I don't know cyborg. how much Albert Payoon had to do with that, but like, yeah, he was work. Albert was working who just recently passed. Sadly. Yeah. Uh, Albert was working on captain America and masters of the universe too. Mm -hmm. So at that point, something merged there and <laughs> yeah, but like, yeah, if, I don't know. I didn't know about the, the whole movie part, but I do know the action scenes weren't working. That's the version I had heard. And Something so that, like that Van Damme, they secretly had him come in and recut the action sequences. But yeah, that's the version yeah. I heard anyway. It could very well be yeah. true. Because look, I love Albert Payoon, but motherfucker knew how to make a great mm. movie or a great piece of shit. There's, <laughs> There's no, in, no between. in between. We're going to get to Van Damme soon. Trust me, everybody. Predator? Cool. 
<laughs> yeah, he was actually originally the Predator. Um, there's yeah. you can find pictures and stuff out there. He, they they redesigned the Predator. That was another part of it, because initially he was meant to be more like a bug creature, and yeah, you can it, see you can see Van Damme in like his orange outfit where he's running around. It looks more like a bug kind of creature thing. Yeah, and I think some of that stuff wound up in the movie, but they you know they rotoscoped it out with the when when he's cloaked. Right when the predator's cloaked, so I think John Clyde Van Damme might technically be in the movie, but he's not really because they cut him out. Y- you know what I mean? Yeah, um, I think there's yeah. one scene where he interacted with one of the other actors that's still in there. Supposedly, I can't remember which one specifically, yeah. but yeah. Originally, the predator was supposed to be seen a lot more. I remember, and then they worked in this gimmick of visibility. The invisibility. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was another bone of contention, from what I understand, with Van Damme. Van Damme wasn't keen on the fact that you couldn't see his face. He wasn't keen on the suit. He was complaining a lot, from what I understand. So he's and Pedro Pascal. Okay, gotcha. It's one, it one of the reasons. <laughs> well, let's be real. He's all coked up, and he's in a jungle. <laughs> so I'll give him that. Right. I mean, so, motherfucker's uncomfortable, yeah. right? <laughs> so just quickly, sorry to interrupt. Uh, Connor B. Over an Odyssey, Connor B. tipped uh, uh, one Canadian buck. Uh, tw- uh, Pussy Galore meets Oh My God, the Cock. So I guess that's when I was playing that clip of Pussy Galore. So, but no, like um, Razor said something important though about the history of, of C- Canon and John claude Van Damme. Do uh, not believe the story that <laughs> Golan put out there about him. That is not true. <laughs> the whole soup story is not fucking true at all. <laughs> Just so uh, you know. Uh, well, uh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, so we have to. I'll bear that in mind next next time I eat soup. I'll bear that in mind. Well, he, uh, he told a story that he'd come up to him in a restaurant, and he was the waiter. And he's like, I'm going to be the bi- next biggest movie star in the world. And Golan didn't believe him. And he he kicked mm-hmm. a bowl of soup off another waiter's tray, and it landed squarely on in his hands or something like that. It's this crazy fucking <laughs> yeah, story. It's nuts. Yeah, it's nuts. <laughs> um, but TZ Burton also tipped five uh, can of bucks. Uh I don't think it could be Canadian bucks. I don't know. I mean, it could be any kind of bucks. Uh, for so this is a treat today. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying it, TZ. You're a big supporter of the channel. I really appreciate it, mate. Love the Razor Fist Arcade with Terran. Yeah, Terran's a great guy. I, was, I love watching your gaming streams, Razor, and uh, you and Terran. Thank you. They're, they're fantastic, mate. Love them. Uh, Happy New Year, everyone. A Razor Sebastian Gorka was excited. To Mescent, I believe, when you were on his show last week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had a good time. But I've been on there a couple of times now. Yeah. Was it good? Good fun? I didn't see that one. Very oh. good. I mean, I started out in radio, so it was kind of cool to oh, sort of right. be on a national radio show. for the cool. It was kind of a... Yeah, it was, it was pretty neat. Very nice. And, right? uh, yeah, good stuff. Razor, uh, that I didn't know that. Rome stream you did a couple of, like, you know, like mid-November... I actually downloaded the game. I absolutely love it. It's an amazing game. It came out of nowhere. It hit me yeah. right in the nads. RPG, isometric RPG set in ancient Rome. What? Okay. Whatever. Yeah, I take. immediately downloaded the other two as well, Conquistador and Vikings as well. And you know what? They're a little more primitive and a little more basic, but I've been having fun mm. with them. No, I, d- I dig them all. It's great. Cool. No, I love watching your gaming streams, and sometimes you're playing stuff I haven't played before. It's, it's a good... And- Kind of what I try to do when when everyone's yeah. playing one game, I try to zig instead of zag because well, there's a lot of hey guys, this game came out, so well, every single gaming channel that you subscribe to is all yeah. playing the same thing oh, yeah. simultaneously. Like yeah. I tried not to do that. Well, possible. you got me into the Sinking City because you were playing that cool game. Which, yeah, yeah, I love that game. Lovecraft. Now. Yeah, thanks for t- for for doing that because I'd never heard of it before then. Yeah, I like are you not going to the- play Rage? Shadow Legends. No. <laughs> I'm still waiting on the sponsorship. Uh, my my penis. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to Rage Shadow Legends for sponsoring me, but your shit. Right, um, I was going to say. But, but before we move on in this canon film stream, we should talk about our sponsor. I'd like to thank Rage Shadow Legends yeah. for not sponsoring me. This I channel, right? Yeah. So Trucker okay. Rob, again, with the cash tipped 273, just got my savings dividend. A whole seven cents got to spread the wealth. Well, thank you for that seven cents, Rob. You know, you may be asking for that back by the end of the year when it's hyper mega inflation. So right. I appreciate that. And our good friend Christian Delorme has yet again tipped um, 
The guy never something. stops. He's yep. he, a great guy. And Christian and I will be streaming again soon. Um, I think our next chosen victim, I mean, artist is Chris Rhea. <laughs> I tend to do the wet on the Wednesday nights. I don't do the metal stuff. I do this other stuff I like, which people would not be so into on the metal side. So. For us older folks. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and Joe joins in on those streams too. So, uh, so yeah, um, Christian, I'm trying to paste your message in. Christian. Christian's a force. Oh, there it is. Got it. Sorry. I'm having trouble pasting them in. I keep pasting the, the old ones in. Christian tipped the dollar. Whenever I hear Tom's voice, I get, get thirsty for old Milwaukee beer. Cheers. Oh, my God. He, <laughs> <laughs> he keeps trying to get me to drink that. Dude, you go, man. Somebody's got to buy that stuff. Mm, is you it? Go. Yeah. <laughs> mm, okay, yeah. <laughs> so let's uh, move on to. And I, and I noticed the Union of Amateur, Union of Amateur Strategists, you were mentioning about Odyssey memberships. Obviously, I can't do um, YouTube memberships. I'm not at 1K yet, but I'll look into the Odyssey stuff because I do stream over there and rumble too so i uh, try i want to do separate streams over in those uh, as time goes by um so let's look at this piece of magnificent magnificence dolph lundgren the dolph smartest lundgren, my brother's man. favorite actor of all time he's got every movie the guy's ever smartest made smartest man in hollywood i'm telling you literally is. what is he a chemist is oh, that what he is? something like uh, that, chemical yeah. engineering that, that uh, knew it had something to do with chemistry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so the perfect human. guy to play this role, man. I mean, like, yeah. tailor made. Mm -hmm. this, he is He Man. <laughs> I mean, you look oh, at yeah. that and you think no one else could do that. It's, now, it's this like, was after Rocky like Four, right, Tom? In real yes. life. No. Built like a brick shit house. Like, He Man. And, and was this the only canon movie, movie he made? Uh, it I may have been. Because his. Like, did he, he do another did one? Scorpion. Okay, I was gonna say. Usually, when, uh, that's the thing. Like right, what Razor right. was saying is, usually when they would sign these guys, they would sign them for multi-picture deals. Usually, so yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would have thought so. Um, but let's just see if we can get a little bit of the trailer going too. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully it'll work. Oh, there and we this go. This movie also gives us the joy that is Courtney that Cox. Oh, yes, well, indeed. indeed. There you well, go. Frank Langella as Skeletor was. Yes, like, Langella is the casting Tom. Fuck inspired <laughs> casting. Just. This is so much fun. This movie. It's not just He Man. It's He Man with guns. And, uh, it's <laughs> fun. Well, they did have guns in the original series, but here's the thing: is yeah, it's true. The, the original, the original is basically kind of almost like an even split between Conan. And Star Wars, right? Yeah. This and movie, then, Godard, Godard or however you say his name, he he wanted to lean more into the Star Wars shit. Wait a minute, you're saying this was a Jean Luc Godard movie? No. No. What the hell is his <laughs> name? Godard, um, I'm just kidding. Uh, Goddard or whatever his name is. Yeah. No, this is Art House. Um, the actor, sorry. The Kitty the Diddler name? guy that got the director of uh, it. Yeah. The. Uh, you have to be way more specific on that one, Tom. Remind me. I'm trying this... to. Gary Goddard, I think his name is. No. Gary Goddard, yeah. Remind me of the name of this actor. Right? He was a Back to the oh, Future. Oh, that's he Tolkien. A um, he said Robocop. And I can't remember his first. He's in everything back then. Yeah. yeah. He's actually uh, like a relative of J.R.R. Tolkien. It's, yeah, uh, Michael Michael Tolkien. Is it Michael? That's oh. Something like that, yeah. I didn't know yeah. that. He's in I'll Robocop specifically, I remember. Oh, you see him in a lot of Not stuff. Robocop. He's in he Back to the Admiral Future. He's, he's the principal in Back to the Future. I and top Gun, yeah. Oh yes, yeah. I was just watching that. Oh. I learned so much watching you guys. Yeah, I I forget everything. So no, you right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody this learns from listening. Him. He's in Dick Tracy as well. Yeah. Uh, well, that's just a rumor. That's a nice and a bunch of other shit. Then. God, he's not even listed on the. Uh, What's that? Yes, drinking? he is. James Tolkien. James Tolkien. Mr. Yeah. Strickland was James, James Tolkien okay. with a C. Is, Jesus, uh, did that guy ever have hair? He is actually a relative of GRR. I think they're like a distant relative. GRR, yeah. GRR, GRR, hmm. GRR. yeah, he's the one that uh, uh, grabs the almanac from Biff in 1965 yeah. in, uh, yeah. in part two. Ooh in la the, la. Uh, and yeah, it turns out to be ooh la la. And he, uh, he accuses him of drinking alcohol. Oh, I would never do that. And then he's pouring it into his own coffee mug. You anyway, he's that. he's in the goodness. <laughs> Langella is magnificent. I I mm -hmm. think for me, next to Flash, Gordon, the the uh, Let's fix this. This is next to Flash. This is my favorite sci-fi fantasy movie. 
Well, they kind of turned it into reverse Flash, right? Like, because it's He-Man yeah. coming to Earth, which was their way of saving on the budget, because then they didn't have to spend any time in Eternia. Yeah. That fits in. Or am I the only one that heard that? <laughs> Could be. Uh, yeah, this is an awesome, awesome spectacle. And who knew? I mean, I mean, Tom, you're the expert on this. Uh, the, the whole origin of this. I think this was way better than we would have had an expectation of. Well, it's both better and then worse at the same time. Because like those of us who at the time were huge, you know, fans of the, the series, and as kids were like, "Where's Orko? Where's you know?" Prince Adam, yeah, for fuck's yeah. sake. I mean, th it doesn't even follow the, the... It's almost like it's loosely more based on the original DC comics that came mm. with the figures in some ways. Like, because in that sense, He-Man is just He-Man. There's no alter ego, right? Like, it's mm. just that's what it is. And there's very little to kind of tie it to the Masters of the Universe franchise. So, like, as far as, like, as a He-Man movie, it fucking sucks. Now, if you're talking about a sword and sorcery movie, it's great. Like Which that's is, the there part were a of lot of those at the time, yeah. and it almost feels like an attempt to cash in as much on Conan's location as it was massive. It's like it's like trying it simultaneously to cash in on the popularity of the Conan movies at the time and mm -hmm. of Star Wars, which had just ended. Right, you're, this yeah. is '87. This is only a few years after Return of the Jedi, and you can see the Return of the Jedi parallels here uh, mm -hmm. clearly. And since He-Man was already oh, no. influenced by those, it became a snake eating its own tail at that point kind of thing. But oh, I unapologetically no, love it for its fun. And, and Well, me too. And, was. I, and I wasn't a big fan of the TV cartoon. It was I wasn't even watching TV or cartoons at that time. I mean, I was quite a bit old. I'm, I'm a lot older than you guys, you know. <laughs> I might not have been um, born yet. So yeah, I so, well, I was so, still watching them, my kids. But the you know, movie, we're, we're watching, yeah, yeah. Joe's, you're, you and I are kind of a similar age. So the movie though was something I wanted to watch. So I didn't have a lot of that lore, or whatever. So I I loved it. I wasn't looking well, for the flaws because I didn't know they existed. You know, I didn't know anything uh, about He Man, but uh, I knew who Dolph Lundgren was, and I knew it was a science fiction movie, and I loved Frank Langella from the Dracula mm -hmm. movie. So yeah. I was like, "Hey, yeah, I'm gonna have to check this out." And it was fun. Yeah. And I always put this in the same vein as like some of the Paul Verhoeven movies, like Starship Troopers, where it's like almost a such a bad parody. It's amazing. Right. Well, and, and it's they're striking while the iron is hot a little bit with Dolph Lundgren because he had just been right. in a James Bond movie and Rocky Four, mm -hmm. and he's coming right off of Rocky Four. In fact, it's like the next movie he makes after Rocky Four. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, Punisher was after like, this. What's up? As nice so as the Punisher was after this one. The yes. Punisher yet came out after it, and okay. uh, yeah. so did Red Scorpion. So. Oh, yeah. he, a lot of his most famous movies were kind of still to come. He was still on the upswing, um, which is interesting. But it it didn't really help. The movie was a massive fucking thermonuclear bomb. Yeah, it was uh, it? I was just going to say how how badly was it? How badly did it? Do? I think the budget was reported somewhere between fifteen and twenty some million, and it mm. didn't it made like make fourteen million, which is something like, like that yeah, at the box yeah, office. Yeah. It's like that's nothing. Mm. So it, it did, like didn't even make its money back. Probably did a when lot you better on home video, though. Right, and then when you compare it to something like what Ninja Turtles did just three years later, like that's the thing. That's the potential it had. But not only that, you had the you know even though Lundgren was on the upswing of his career, He Man was on its way out as far as popularity. Yeah, in '87, uh, yeah. absolutely. By then, you by had a problem. Yeah. By '87, isn't that the same year Ninja Turtles the show came out? So yeah, and that roughly really, yes. You actually had really Ghostbusters was really kind of more of the popular thing right now than anything. But yeah, yeah. yeah. And I remember that because like, I was a little kid watching like you know the Ghostbusters cartoon as a kid, and like that was the big thing. But I was also a huge Ninja Turtles fan. Ghostbusters was like the bridge between He Man and Ninja Turtles. Mm -hmm. Like there was that was mm -hmm. like the, the little bridge between like because He-Man was the biggest toy on the planet yep. for a hot minute. And then She-Ra killed it. And also when this movie came out was also the time where, you know, She-Ra was coming to be a thing. They didn't have any new shows on TV to help promote it. The toys were lackluster. They didn't have shit for He-Man toys. She-Ra was taking over the entire line. 
Ghostbusters had finally got their shit in gear in the Christmas of 86 hmm. is when Ghostbusters, the real Ghostbusters stuff, finally hit shelves and hit television. So for a few years, Ghostbusters dominated the boys market. Then all of a sudden at the end of 87, beginning of 88 is when Ninja Turtles hit. So yeah, Ghostbusters got like a year there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you, can tell, you can tell which franchise you can tell which born in early 87. And then right. I went into like the Rocketeer early 91. Because right. I saw the movie when I was like five years old and I absolutely well, loved that character. Billy Campbell, Bruce's cousin. Um, for a lot Joe. of for a lot of kids, uh, yeah. Transformers is in the mix too. There, oh yeah, uh, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it was around oh, the same yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. gonna Absolutely. say the biggest the biggest franchises you could tell by walking down the toy aisle. They had the biggest section in the toy aisle. Mm -hmm. They did. Yeah, yeah. And Transformers. But I'm going by right, pure dollar signs, like around the time this yeah. movie came out, it was huge. Well, yeah. Transformers and GI Joe coincided with He Man. Mm -hmm. See, those guys were always the second and third in line to He Man's massive, you know, Pectibles. intake. Massive pictures. Yeah, yeah. And then Ghostbusters, like I said, came in and, and really kind of dominated for about a year. And then Ninja Turtles changed the game again because, mm. like, like Razor Fist said, I think unless there's been some change in the numbers, Ninja Turtles is still the biggest toy line figures uh, figure toy line there is in history. For boys, yeah, so okay. uh, it's bigger than Star so, Wars was really. Uh, I than, think so. <laughs> well, it, it, what we're measuring this by is the biggest single year of sales okay. for any yeah. toy line ever, and it's not even close. Star Wars yeah. doesn't even come in the same neighborhood. Mm, okay. uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in like 91, 92, 93 was like year after year after they year. They dominated, shattering there's video. There's a great is. video where you've got the Playmates guys sitting down with Eastman and Laird, and they put this in the documentary. Uh, uh, turtle, turtle power, power i think and mm. it's like look there's a three-year window on this thing they say to these guys yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you know where they got like... this three-year window was from masters of the universe and 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 transformers and gi joe and all those things so that's how they kind of knew this they had no fucking idea that ninja turtles was going to be one of those things that just kind of stuck around forever you know and, and rightfully so you know even though what, they keep Tom, trying to destroy it but we're not here yeah, the that... reasons uh kevin eastman wound up selling his stake in ninja turtles was he was like ah, yeah. oh, we were supposed to have three years we wound up having like seven no we wound yeah. up having like 10 so eh, it's probably over it's so i'll just move on i'll move on to heavy metal and climbing julie strain for a living and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know that's what they used to be like in, for now they used to be like that in the music business eh? you'll have three years at the top and then you'll go and become a hairdresser or something you know it's that short-term view of popular culture which was was that was all that, that which in was. the end really canon could have done anything they fucking wanted with this movie mentello was their own worst enemy in this case you can't really mm. blame canon for much of this because let's be real no matter how much money they would have thrown at this movie there was no way we're getting a battle cat or or orco so at that point, it doesn't really make any sense to add in all the mix with mm. with the whole Prince Adam fan. In fact, she was in early drafts, but at that point, they're like, "Now nah, we're just not even going to get into that shit because that's another you know extra five million dollars we don't have in the script, right? Mm. So or in the budget for the script. So like that's the thing is, were we ever going to get a movie like we expect now? Oh fuck no! But Mattel had destroyed the brand at that point. They went from being the biggest yeah. brand in the world to the, one of the lowest brands within a year because of mm. how they handled shit there. And it's and all their it, fault. If they wanted to do well with a movie like this, they would have done the 86 Transformers movie and done it animated. It animated, did well, but yeah. here's the one that everybody overlooks, and this is why He-Man is still the top of most of the pop most compared to all those other movies they did of those. The Secret of the Sword is the highest grossing of them all. It made almost like $30 million at the time in the box office. Yeah, People don't realize yeah. that. And all that was was the first five episodes of She-Ra crammed together. <laughs> <laughs> clammed. To, did you say clammed together? No, I said crammed. But oh, if you want to say right. clammed <laughs> together, that works too, <laughs> considering. It does. Uh, all right, so, John, Someone did you... Someone was doing the Ninja Turtles song in the chat, and now it's in my head. Oh, I'll never get out of your head now. John, you were going to say something earlier. I yeah, think. I was going to say as nice as Courtney Cox is in this movie, um, can we not forget that Evil Lynn is played by Meg Foster? Oh, yes. Let's not forget mm, yes. that, too. Great. <laughs> yes. 
Great yeah, term is. And besides, we've got the best Courtney work. on the show right now. We don't need Courtney. We're true. That's the thing. Her the movie was casted Courtney. perfectly. Used to be like Courtney, because my my name is alliterative, alliterative as well. Um, All right. But yeah, people used to be like Courtney Cox. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, just wanted to read out uh, the latest tip from Mitch. Tip three dollars thirty four cents. Found the stream via Razor. Cool. Nice. I'm gonna check out the metal streams, enjoying it. Yeah, we do some some great uh, music streams. All not all this metal, but a lot of metal. Pope and Imperatus do their own streams, which I'm sometimes on with metal as well. So check their channels out too. Uh, yeah, if you're into the metal streams, come up ch uh, check out my channel with uh, Rock and Roll Religion. I think you'll uh, yeah. like. Sundays, yeah. Rock and Roll Religion is a great Indeed. show on and Pope's Joe, channel. And Joe and I do other music streams outside of the It's Only Talk and Roll Mondays as well, which are less metal. but And I do a radio show, which you get all sorts of good stuff on. Um, so thank you, Mitch. And there is one more just before we move on to... We've not talked Jean-Claude Van Damme much yet, so we're going to move on to yeah, Jean-Claude. We can't can't ignore him. We can't. No. We've, and we won't ignore him. Uh, no matter so how one, hard we try. He's probably no. listening. Yeah, well, I hope so. I He's everywhere. To, I'd love to hope he was. They're to going to him. talk about me. I want to hear every word. So we had uh, deleted scenes. Great, uh, Stephen, great friend of the uh, channel uh, and of indeed all our channels and of his own channel. Um, took two dollars, if I can call it up here. Yeah, bringing back a lot of good memories. Thank you, seventies and panel. Well, it's all our pleasure. We're basic, barely even scratching the surface, oh, really. Okay. So I said at the beginning, we might have to do a second, a third, a fourth, and then focus in on just certain things, but this is more of a... Well, I had another guest I was hoping to make it today, but he wasn't able to, that maybe we'll have to work out oh, for future. I, I think yeah. I know who you mean, and before we move on to Jean-Claude Van Damme, I wanted to point out those who you're talking about. I think it's this, is it... Um, the Canon Film Guides, because I've bought yes, those. Yes, Austin Trench. Austin yes. Trench. I just got those on digital. I haven't got or Trunic, I'm sorry, not Trench. Jesus Christ. And Austin, Austin Trunic. Trunic. <laughs> uh, so, so I think there's only two so far, but there's a third planned. Is that right? Yes, yes. Uh, he's going to be uh, uh, working. I think he's working on it now. Yeah, last I talked to him. It's been a few months since I've spoke to him, like, outside of asking him to be on here. But, yeah. Yeah, so I got these on Kindle, but you can get paper uh, soft cover and hardcover copies austin too. trench is actually a listener of the channel that's where i fucked it up i'm yeah. sorry so, <laughs> volumes one and two they are fascinating you can get these on amazon yeah i've got them on Kindle. yeah this guy is the encyclopedia of canon film knowledge uh yeah, awesome. i do want to buy them on hardback copy as well but i, I, I just got them he literally the wrote the book on it folks like when and there it is. <laughs> they're funny yeah. they're informative he's got interviews there's some brilliant stuff in here, loads of trivia, lots of stuff I had never heard of. And then, of course, we've all probably seen the film, uh, the Google Go -Go Boys, Boys movie, which I think is on Netflix, Netflix or Amazon Prime, one or the other. This is fun, a fun, fun I movie, too. The other so, one, the what's the other one? Not that, but the... Uh, um, I keep forgetting the name of it, too. There is another one, you're right, yeah. Oh, and it's really good too. And it is. I'm blanking, um, it's I'm blanking it, but if we remember by the end, we'll, we'll throw a couple. They up. still pull clips from it for this day for special features on discs, and I can't remember what the hell yeah. it was. Well, we'll we'll, we'll recircle to that. We'll we'll restomp that groin on that one later. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's <laughs> come uh, Canon Film Guides one and two, volume uh, three coming. They are uh, trust me, they are fascinating read i was up till about four o'clock in the morning reading the, the first one this morning the, the other documentary finished. you guys are talking about it's is, electric uh, boogaloo like yeah. jesus boogaloo, fucking christ yeah, yeah. electric boogaloo that's good i just too. looked it up yeah really good david yeah, march got it too so yep. let's get that's the one i have electric boogaloo yeah, yeah that's why i started well. man so let us get to the great, the one and only, oops, sorry, Sylvester Stallone, uh, the one and only well, John let's face Claude. It, Cobra, you know, covers for like 90% of Canon's failure. Well, we're getting there, <laughs> it does. So, third favorite for me, first favorite was Life Force, fourth favorite was Death Wish 2, my third favorite is Cyborg. And I had a rule when I picked my five favorites not two movies by the same actor. So that cyborg is my Jean-Claude Van Damme entry. 
And I, what? again, science fiction. I'm a science fiction guy. Yes, I love you are. this I movie. I forgot about that. I freaking love this movie. It's a, um, it's a very different... It, it's strange in that you would think, okay, Jean-Claude Van Damme, Canon Films, this is just going to be nothing but action, like whatever. No, it's more of a post-apocalyptic. It's almost a little depressing in places. Yeah. It's sort of a Mad Max meets Kung Fu sort of a thing going yeah. on. And it really... It subverts expectations. It, uh, but not, <laughs> not, <laughs> I'm going to clip that too. <laughs> That's going to be on my audio soundboard from now on. Right. <laughs> this movie brings back, I, I don't know. I, I told you, my dad and my brother watched all of these movies. And as a girl, I used to just be like so bored. Now I would appreciate it. I, yeah. I love it um, because as just what as Razor said, it's I, I'm a big fan of post-apocalyptic science fiction, yeah. and immediately that appealed to me. I don't think I was even particularly aware at the time it came out that who Jean Claude Van Damme was. It might even have been the. F yeah, he's I, pretty I, new. I don't think he had maybe yeah. done Kickboxer before this. Me, I was gonna say either Bloodsport or Kickboxer was one oh, of his first ones that launched him. This, and, yeah. and I think and then the this end, was like his next. Yeah, like and they had come out earlier, but I don't think I'd watched those in, on, until later on VHS. This I went to the cinema to see, and I thought this is fucking awesome because I just like post-apocalyptic shit mm -hmm. and the performance. It, yeah, it's got a lot more going for it than just action. All of the action. This is before really... Universal Soldier, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Much yeah. Before. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Well, the portion of this that they stole from Masters of the Universe 2 was basically like He Man was supposed to be protecting some, you know, that's who this, the one girl is, the cyborg or whatever, the whole mm -hmm. thing. Like, that's that portion is taken from it. The rest was actually yeah. repurposed in another movie um, where the rest of the plot was supposed to be. He man has to go back to Earth because Skeletor had escaped and went to Earth. He thought he killed Skeletor, remember, but actually escaped to Earth, back to Earth. And he had been, uh, he had been, ha he had makeup and shit on or whatever to make him look like a human. And he actually had become either president or a senator at that point. Now, if that sounds familiar, because that's the same fucking plot that Albert Payune ended up using for Captain America mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with the with the <laughs> with the Red Skull. Yeah, I actually like what that is. Thank you for posting up this summary. It was Jean Claude Van Damme stars as Gibson Rickenbacker. It just and then oh yeah, I forgot <laughs> about all the characters being <laughs> after the names. After yeah. got a mercenary oh, battles a group of murderous murders led by Fender Tremolo along the east coast of the U.S. Yeah. in post-apocalyptic future. But there's also Marshall okay. Strat. Is there really? There's That's, a Marshall. Man, come oh. on! How many? How many more You're musical right. references can you put but into really, the name? Really, it should have been Fender. Like, That's not even like band references or song references. <laughs> like you're in, referencing the instruments at that point. That's but why. Why was it not Fender, Fender? Fender Strat, not Marshall Strat, would have been appropriate. I don't get that. And then right. Marshall Stack. Well, you have to. You have to. You have to mix up the. They were mixing them up, that. like Gibson, Rickenbacker, Fender Tremel. You know, like. Yeah. Well, would this almost fall into that? Would this movie almost fall into the cyberpunk kind of category or what I'm thinking of? Or? Well, a, little a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. It it's the cyberpunk it. like revolution, really, but it in terms of tone and uh, subject matter, yeah, it kind of fits. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think it's part of that uh, canon. canon uh, uh, of cyberpunk <laughs> movies, it's, it was heading that way. Um, I think it was from the fear of urban decay period where every city was being overrun by gangs in the near future. So it came true. Van Damme was in Breaking Two. Yeah, Someone actually came chat. true. I don't remember that. Sorry, who's Which in the Demolition chat? Man set like five years after the movie. <laughs> well, oh, that was the the was, was which one of these movies is set in nineteen ninety? Oh my God, they started with In a World. Sorry, I, I just had In a World. Well, of course they did. For one man, this is that period. He spanked his plank, Fender Stratocaster. <laughs> <laughs> He couldn't Only stop working man. his whammy bar. That's right. He melted his friend. It's brilliant. I just love it. Yeah, I, love I can't sets. tell if the metal bands from this period were taking wardrobe advice from the movie guys or yeah. vice versa. 
Well, Christopher Lambert borrowed one of these jackets for Highlander as well. Mm-hmm. Well, what's weird is, like I said, that all the a lot of the sets and wardrobe are actually meant for He-Man. In fact, they're repurposed from the original Masters. Like that bad guy there, that chain link thing he's got on, that's Blade's, that's Blade's outfit from Masters of the Universe. Oh, wow, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, that was, uh, is it Vincent Klein? Plays the, the baddie? Vincent yeah, Klein? he was in a lot of Italian. Yeah, wasn't he from... He was in a lot of Italian giallo films. Yeah. Was he in Point Break or something like that at this point? Something like that? He's remember. actually in a fantastic Fred Williamson vehicle by the oh. name of Black Cobra. Oh, I've heard oh, of that. I remember that. Black Cobra, yeah. I, uh, I liked him in this, and I, I loved the whole bit about um, go to hell. You know. You, know, you go to hell, and well, he said, you know, the whole bit where the guy says, oh, "But we could save the world." I like the world as it is. I thought that stuff was fantastic. It's just me. I'm silly. Um, yeah, so that was, but GCV D oh, was in of Red Surf. Oh yeah, and, and he was in Point Break. Yeah, yeah, I re- I that's what I thought. Yeah. I he was know. a boat. <laughs> I recognize. He was. Was he one of the crew? One of um, Patrick Sweezy's crew. No, oh no, I, don't no, think, so. I think he's he went uh, up against them. Part of the guys that ran with what's that dude uh that was a- from uh, Anthony oh. Kiedis and um Ke- oh he was the ones Kiedis. that they fought on the beach. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh yeah. one of the uh, one of the yeah. uh, red Kiedis hot chili the peppers is the member chili that bunch. Yeah. Yeah, he's in point break. Him and him, is he really? He has a line that says that would be a waste of time. That's right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, that bunch he fights on the beach, he thinks they're the terrorists, but it ends up not being them. Yeah. So mm-hmm. this is my, I picked this as my favorite Van Damme canon. It's tough because they're all, I mean, what do you guys prefer? What's what's the I'm a big blood oh, sport blood sport. fan. Yeah, blood, blood sport, sport for sure. Yeah. No, no, no doubt. Well, first of all, you got to remember, I'm not a huge Van Damme fan. Never have been. I'm more Bruce Lee, Chuck Norris guy. But uh, it, it, as far as his films... Uh, and Canon goes, I'd say Bloodsport and Kickboxer are probably my favorites he did above this movie, really. But I, I know why you like it because it's it's sci fi, you dig yeah, that stuff. That yeah. appeals to me. He's so. the best, the best by far, and it's not even close. It's hard target. He's rocking yeah. the mullet. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. I forgot that's oh, canon. Good. Good. I'd forgotten about Is that, that a canon film? <laughs> No, no, it's not. It's a universal. I was gonna say I thought that was universal. That's I was gonna say uh, yeah. my favorite one outside of canon is Time Cop. So we, the one I, I was yeah, gonna say I Time Cop that. is one I've always been partial to. Yeah, Cop, and it well, did make him the most money. It, yeah, I love that. The funny thing about Jean Claude Van Damme is, un- unlike a lot of these actors, he tried to evolve his career in the '90s. You remember when he was like supposed to be a heartthrob for a minute? Like right. he was, mm. he was like well, a romantic. When he did like Lionheart and shit like that. Yeah. yeah. Somebody said in the chat the that he was in Breaking Two. Is that true? Yeah, in the background. Yeah, yeah, it's just that, like, that, that I was like, I don't remember. So we've got Bloodsport, Cyborg. Um, what else? Kickboxer is another Kickboxer, canon. Oh, yeah. the canon ones, oh, I'm thinking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. He, he came at the tail end of Bloodsport. Uh, uh, give me one the tail end of everything yeah. else. I'd say the quest. Say that again. Say out of out of the canon catalog with Jean Claude Van Damme, I'd yeah. say Bloodsport. But out of you know all his movies, I'd say the quest. I'm thinking of canon ones because I'm just going to stick a quick poll up just to see what everybody else thinks. Yeah. So we've got Bloodsport, this is technically, Cyborg, Kickboxer. According to this, this is Cyborg is technically the last official uh, produced Golden Globus film. Mm. So that must have been where the, the split happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it then, happened right after that. Because then right. after that, you get Associate Globus Pierce Cannon. Yes. And then so this is... This is a post goal, and then you had Kickboxer, which came after There's actually. Be a fourth yeah, one. if you're gonna do a if you're gonna do a poll, it, it's Kickboxer, Bloodsport, Bloodsport and Cyborg. One. Is there another? One? I don't think there's a fourth one. Hang on, I'll look. I can't think of another one. That's why I'm because I'm looking at it now, and this is where the yeah the demarcation is, or whatever you want to call it, where the line where it changed. Well, yeah. So eighty nine is when they had the split. Yeah, Kickboxer is actually after Cyborg. It's part of that period yep. you're talking about. Yep. We'll just do three then. So I'm putting a so poll even up. though I think Golan probably had something to do with it producerial wise, it was released after he was gone from the company. So I stuck a poll up to um, to see of those three movies, what is everyone's favorites? Because we've had the uh, 
a divergence of opinion here, I think, which is interesting. So, but I mean, it's nothing wrong with them. They're all great. But as I said, well, myself, perspective, you, you are into sci-fi that that's, yeah. that's your baby right there. Right. I'm more into martial artists on the whole you know, like Bruce Lee and, and Chuck Norris and, and, uh, blood sport is loose. I super loosely based on a real guy. So yeah, that's why I dug that Frank one. Dukes based on a true made up story. I mean, as I say, I set myself a rule that I would only pick one from each actor. So, uh, and actually we were talking about show Kosugi earlier. Mm -hmm. um, he was involved in a, a really a pretty cool movie with Jean Claude Van Damme called Black Eagle, where Van Damme was actually yeah. the antagonist. This is yeah, I was, gonna bring, was, I was looking at that one actually, Razor, because I wasn't sure if that was a Golden Globus film or not. I was checking yeah, that out. Right. I was like, yeah, it's not. But if I was picking an overall one, somebody mentioned Time Cop. That would be my favorite Jean Claude Van Damme. Again, science fiction and, and a great. I love time travel stuff. Um, but of these, I would have picked Cyborg. So I'm trying to get the trailer for. Uh, blood sport to come up and i'm having trouble watch that'll be the one that gets us hit right? i was gonna say if it's that mgm they're the friggin worst I'll take yeah. it. oh they're the absolute worst the so amount of copyright that. claims i have for the for the uh, canon film stuff yeah is ridiculous just i'll take that I'll, I'll stop that one then just in case so uh, it yeah, was the worst them or japanese recording studios right I might get kicked Toho's or... pretty bad they were getting they were hitting me for 50 year old trailers i know that channel yeah so kickboxer uh might try that one then but usually i try as i say i did test a lot of canon trailers in private by downloading them and uploading them in private and they seem to be okay so uh i was trying to find a decent uh decent one not kickboxer the redemption i think oh, oh god with the finest dancing scene ever. <laughs> yeah, that's a movie even More I like draw Electric Booga Who. That, that, that's time for like the second Mortal Kombat movie with like the worst martial arts film of all time. Is can I ask a serious question? Is Jean Claude Van, Van Damme's waist at like his sternum? He wears the <laughs> highest hit pants in that movie. Yes, it's it is. My yes. grandpa. Uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> they used to call the just trying to make his legs look longer, man. I think they used to have. Uh, damn, uh, my man. Fucking a collarbone is not a belt, my dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's so Razor. you can do the splits, man. When, when I was a kid, they had trousers called high waisters, and that's what they were. Were we up here? Well, remember, like the MC Hammer pants. I've heard, I don't know how many know, stories that, like, about him that he always more. has to show off that he can do the splits every time. Yeah. It's in a lot of the movies. Let, let's be real. It really is. Damn he man. also, no, I mean, like when he actually in, he introduces yeah, it, like it's introduced to him, like in person. Right. I also, <laughs> it's alarming how often I've seen his suspiciously well waxed ass crack in a movie. Like, <laughs> you, you know, he insists on an ass yes. shot in every movie. The ladies want to see it. There's a question in um, the comments that contract. I'm curious about too. Um, Cartoon Man 154 says, Does this mean that the Canon films are owned by Amazon? Oh. Here's the thing there's a weird. There's from 1980. This is what we were trying to talk about earlier because I can't remember now. I think that there was like a there's like three or four pictures that they released through MGM that MGM doesn't have ownership over. Then they did a, like a deal with MGM that I think is like a ten picture deal, and all uh, a bunch of those movies ended up reverting to Warner Brothers because of some deal back in the day. Because the the whole convoluted thing is. MGM got bought out by Ted Turner and anything pre, uh, I think it was 1985, that was not UA, he owned. And when he got merged with Warner, that, that so then there was a whole deal that went there with that. And that 10 picture deal was part of that. So that's why Warner Brothers actually owns the rights to like four or five of those movies or whatever it is. And then MGM has the first four or five. It's a really weird kind of thing but it's only a, like a handful of them um I knew and i think the two that. i think two of the two of the death wish movies fall in there and there's like a couple other ones that mgm owns blood sports obviously any of the ones that have the mgm logo on them 
like when we've been watching these trailers that have the newer MGM logo. Those are the ones that they still own. Hmm. So that was a Tom yeah. question, though. It was, and, and I, was, I wish, I I wish Austin was here. Austin would have had a better, quicker answer for that. Sorry. Which is one of the most obnoxious things about MGM. If you watch any of the documentaries, they interview people from MGM about their relationship with Canon. And MGM are happy to copyright claim every single video you do on any of the Canon films that they own. But every time there's an interview, they'll do nothing but talk shit about Canon films. Yeah. And it's like, okay, yeah. so you're happy to profit from them, but you'll just unremittingly dump on them from dawn to dusk. Go to hell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah like and it might be more down. like 15 or, and it might be more like 15 or 20 titles for all I know. It could even be more, but who, it's because that's the thing. Canon made so many fucking movies. They made more movies in a month than most studios made in a year. Yeah. Right. In their heyday. I think yeah. in the 10 year period between 79 and 89, they made something like 250 plus movies. Mm -hmm. It's a ridiculous amount. I mean, they did have the odd distribution deal with other, people that were producing them but a lot of those were directly made that's the by thing them. yeah, yeah. They, like they, produced, go ahead. Sorry, they produced go ahead just wait to say hi they produced like a lot of these a lot of these studios do for like uh streaming now they were doing that then before there was an outlet for streaming <laughs> that mm. was the problem i was never a big van damme fan myself uh did you ever see the uh interview that steven seagal did on um Oh, what was that guy's name that ran with Eddie Murphy? Had a talk show at night. Yeah, I had a senior moment there for a second, guys. Uh, did you ever see his interview with uh, Steven Seagal? Um, Steven Seagal did nothing but just dump on Van Damme. I mean, just, <laughs> I Seagal mean, is not um, a nice guy. No, I mean, you know, it, it, it's it's kind of a famous interview because uh, Steven Seagal kind of because uh, at the time it was the I think Freddie Mercury had just died of AIDS not too far before that. It was back when AIDS was a death sentence, basically. And uh, he was talking about where he thought AIDS came from. And in the same interview, he was talking about the dam uh, being a champion of something. He said, champion of what? T tell me what he's a champion. Wow. You know, I wrong. mean, he was questioning his, his entire martial yeah, arts he's background. not wrong, incidentally. Yeah. Like, Jean-Claude Van Damme's entire fight record is like, a lot of it was supposedly in underground kind of competitions mm. or whatever. And you have to keep in mind, Canon Films mm. made up a lot of bullshit to publicize his movies, okay? Yeah. And he had to go along yeah. with a lot of that shit. So mm -hmm. some of it's yeah. probably fictitious. In fact, a lot of it's probably fictitious. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I always thought that was kind of funny. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Steven Seagal. I mean, Steven Seagal I, is, in his defense, a master of a uh, martial art form that is dubious the, somewhat. It but, is very is dubious, yes. <laughs> but, he, but he is nevertheless a, man, a master of it, and he can I'm credibly claim in no way that. saying the guy is no. a, a, a encyclopedia of martial arts knowledge, but right. I just thought it was hilarious that he was calling him out on national television during that uh, uh, Well, we all like a bit of that, hell. don't we? It's like Ozzy and Dio calling each other out, but yeah. yeah. You have our gratitude. That's, that's for bringing up all the great facts. <laughs> I'll, I'll give Macho Man Randy Savage more credit for being an actual fighter than uh, either Steven Seagal or uh, either one of them, right? Yeah. No doubt. So we're gonna get to yeah, so yeah. so we've we've done JCVD and we're we're hurtling towards some kind of conclusion eventually. Um, <laughs> although we could go twelve hours, I guess. Um, hey, good. <laughs> So On we'll get to company, Stallone. Yeah, yeah we can't get, not mention oh, Stallone. Let's, Let's get to Sly. You gotta hit Stallone, man. Let's get to Sly. I'm not hitting Stallone. He's hard. Hey, yo, I got a hell of a payday, oh, and I'm going over the top. Oh, yeah. You gotta meet me halfway on this thing. <laughs> now, this was over the top. Yeah. What was the third movie over in his deal? Because it was Cobra right over the right. top and what? Uh, uh, Rambo 3. Okay. And Golan well, and Globus yeah. like weaseled yeah. their fucking way into Cobra and I believe Rambo 3, but yeah. Well, it was a yeah. Warner, it was released by Warner or produced by Warner and released by Canon, something like that. It's yeah. A, yeah. yeah. It's a debate and, whether it's a Canon movie or not. That's a debate. Right. right. Well, it certainly feels like one. It does. And, yeah. Absolutely. And uh, the guy who worked on that, of course, uh, would, would be the. Fucking, what's the director's name? Uh, the guy who worked on Tombstone. 
Uh, oh, uh, George B. Cosmatos. I keep calling George, him yes, Comatos. Cosmatos. George Comatos. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, George P. Comatos is a lot of people call him. Uh, <laughs> such an underrated director, though. I, you know, he gets <sighs> jumped on even by actors who worked with him, and I think they're all full of shit. Like one of my all of his favorite movies, movies have this uniform, cool, cool look to them. Um, this cool style to him, and it's it's all of them uniformly. They all look that way, and it can't be. The allegation is, oh, he let Stallone direct Cobra. Oh, he let uh, Kurt Russell direct Tombstone. He was a ghost director, and it's like, well, then why do his all, all of his movies look kick ass? It's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. It's that's slightly ridiculous. I think there's some bitterness there. Some actors who were not directed and didn't like him, and so they kind of talk crap about him. But he did a lot of the Stallone movies in the late '80s, um, Cobra, and I believe he also did Rambo Three, didn't he? I think you might be right there, yes. Yeah. I, think, I right. think he came in and replaced whoever it was that was originally yeah. directing it, if I remember correctly, because, yeah, because there was a moment there where I think Sly almost directed Rambo 3, if I remember right. Oh, um, and uh, yeah. thank you, uh, the Union of Amateur Strategists, for correcting me. Uh, in Rambo 3, he helps the Mujahideen, not the Taliban. That's right. Yeah, that's yeah. The Mujah that's, it's the Mujahideen. Yeah. It's... Who yeah, become the Taliban? Yeah, right, right. there you go. Exactly. Yes and no. By the way, That's I would like war, so. our great but, friend, your Muslim uncle, is here, and I would like to thank Canon Movies for all their uh, the films they made that attempted to heal relations between the West and the Middle East. You know, like Into the Ninja and um, <laughs> or whatever, <laughs> or no, a Delta Force, and you name it, any movie. Oh man, in the Delta case of Rambo Force, three, preemptively. Force, sorry. You will never see greater world. ethnic stereotypes than in Canada. Come it's on, bro. Jesus. No there's doubt. A, right? Dude, there's a Native American henchman in Revenge of the Ninja who looks like Nightwolf from Mortal Kombat. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh my god. Oh. That's, that's so much. They did so much. Robert Logia, look out. Robert yeah. Logia. Yeah. To heal um, divisions in the world, canon movies. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, let's yeah, face it, the star of. Uh, oh my goodness! Uh, Rock rock movies suspenders. though is the vehicles. Okay, the <laughs> car in friggin' Cobra is the star, and his Mack truck is the star, and over the top, of course. And this Here's, reminded me that yeah, that they had a short-lived deal with Warner Brothers too. Yeah, isn't this the film that had the line "Sweep the thumb"? Oh no, that was Karate Kid. <laughs> That's Karate Kid. <laughs> Sweep the thumb. No. <laughs> That's right. Uh, this movie's about thumb wrestling, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Something like that. So that was over yes, the top. But, but I have to say. That Cobra is number two in my list. Oh, should be number one. Incredible movie. Well, I, 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 <laughs> we know it's number one on yours, Pat. I'm, uh, you know what? No, it's number one on mine because it's we've mentioned it already. It was that. number five on mine. Yes, Cobra is number two in mine. Kind of criminal. Uh, it's just to me, it's we all love Rocky, we all love and Rambo. I'm... To me, it's the Stallone's best and hardest ass motherfucking role. It is. Rocky is, you know, it's like Dirty Harry for the 80s, yes. sort of a thing. Yes. A exactly. In fact, he has the same partner. He, he cast Rini Santoni, and he called him the same name as in Dirty Harry. He's <laughs> his partner's name is Gonzalez, and it's played by the same damn actor. Same actor, and yeah. Then, yeah, and then he got Garrick from DS9, who was the bad guy in Dirty Harry for crying out loud. Andrew Robinson. Oh wow! Unbelievable. Um, I'm hoping one day, I know Scream Factory, Shot Factory, whatever, they've re-released this. There is an uncut, like, director's cut movie of the, the version oh, of right, it. Oh, yeah. This it's is never the been released anywhere. This, this is the and, Scream Factory trailer, and I'd like to shout out Scream Factory and others that have used their trailers, their postings of the trailers on the show today. I, I you know, thank you for, uh, for making such great, uh, putting such great trailers up. I appreciate it. And you certainly, it's you put them up here. I'm just showing them on here, and uh, I don't mean to now, claim any kind of ownership. Isn't this the movie, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, uh, Tom and Razor Fist, isn't this the one that he married, uh, he met the redhead he married? Uh, what's her name there? He was already Nielsen married man. to Pete Nielsen, yeah. It was kind of the last movie they did before they broke up, actually. That's it. Okay, right. all right. Yeah, they were already married, but by this time, they were just about to get divorced because he'd finally managed to look in her, her directly in the face. And she was <laughs> kneeling. She was kneeling at the time. Oh, that was terrible. <laughs> Well, there yeah, is a he was kind of staring of clavicle to her there, right? right? You could do a whole conversation on the history between the connection between this yeah. movie, Beverly Hills Cop, Eddie Murphy, Brigitte Nielsen, yeah. 
a fight between Sly and Eddie Murphy that supposedly happened over Brigitte. Oh my God. All this shit boy. happening behind the scenes of those three movie franchises, I guess you could call it, because Beverly Hills Cop is technically a franchise wow. with the two movies. Because for those who don't know, the shortest version I can tell of this, this movie started as Beverly Hills Cop. Yep. Okay. Sylvester so, Stallone was going to be yeah, in Beverly Hills Cop. And all the changes that he had made to Daniel, Daniel Petrie's original script, Sly took with him when he left amicably. It wasn't like this huge like blow up thing. They were just like the the, the, the the idea that Martin Brest had for the movie compared to what Sly wanted to do just wasn't gelling. I mean, maybe they did butt heads from time to time. I have no idea. But from what I know, they allowed him to take all, all the contributions he did with him to make Cobra. So mm-hmm. Sly went and made Cobra. And while he was, oh, it doing should be that, mentioned. By the way, before you move on, it should be mentioned. It was based on a book, so it started yeah. in earliest phase. It was based on a book, believe it or not. And then, then it was going to be Beverly Hills Cop. So before that, sorry, I just wanted to throw that. Yeah, in. no, that's fine. And then, like, so, like, so then when Brigitte was on Beverly Hills Cop two, <laughs> Sly thought that Eddie and her fucked. <laughs> Oh wow! So those Ooh, two boy. supposedly gotten into a little bit of a scuffle behind some deal, either some rewards. I think it was either the Oscars that year or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so it was like yeah, that some sounds kerfuffle. more Golden Globe caliper stuff. It might have been because Eddie notoriously didn't like to stay at the Oscars if he didn't even did show up then. So it's very plausible it was like the Golden Globes. But yeah, either way, these two got into a fucking. Our, uh, this this the thing about it. So yeah, mm-hmm. that's crazy. The loan was going to be <laughs> Axel Foley, and half the reason yeah. those two got divorced, from what I heard, is neither one of them could stop fucking everybody. So <laughs> yeah. Well, as Darth Scipio says, Arnold nailed Brigitte Nielsen, and I don't know if that's true or not, but I wouldn't be surprised. She and Tom, that's just oh yeah. Now. If he guys, if he nailed his his uh, housekeeper. Of course, <laughs> Nelson. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> sure. That's the thing. I can actually believe Eddie didn't sleep with her, but oh yeah, you, you can bet your Arnold, ass that Arnold yeah, did. Yeah, come on, man. Yeah, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Eddie Mercury. Eddie Mercury. It's Eddie, Eddie Mercury. Mercury. He's, he's the. He's a, a relation to Freddie, is he? Right. Eddie Mercury. Every Eddie Murphy was. Uh, he was kind of infamous for. In fact, if you watch his uh, comedy special from around that time, he was like, he does Raw. this bit. He does this bit about uh, him and Brooke Shields, and uh, they're like, "Oh yeah, the white people are fine with Brooke Shields showing up with Michael Jackson to some award show, but if I show up with her, they're not get- they're gonna have a problem. Why? Because they know if I'm there with her, she's gonna get fucked." <laughs> yeah, that's the thing is Eddie put a lot of that shit out, but he did not. He notoriously was not with a lot of women until after he got married and slept with one on his wife. Right. So I would just like to challenge anyone in the chat who's good at making AI stuff to do a blending of Freddie Mercury and Eddie Murphy, because I want to see Eddie Mercury. Eddie Mercury. Okay. Yes. <laughs> that was Cobra. Greatest singer of all time. Period. Hands down. Eddie, then I Eddie think. Mercury. <laughs> Funniest and greatest singer of all time. Funniest he can sing anything ever. as anybody. Period. <laughs> and his girl likes to party all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, Cobra. She's out in romance and in standard dancing. Cobra is a <laughs> fantastic movie. It's number two of my favorites. It uh, is. I'm sure you guys all love it too. Uh, it's number I five on my list. I, I remember one of the first the streams I did with you. Yeah. Somebody was asking in the chat. Uh, I saw something somewhere where they were clacking axes together. I said, man, that's Cobra. That That's yeah, the guys that's right. in Cobra. Give me and a break. Uh, Razor, I think I hear you saying you prefer over the top. Uh, no, not so much. Not so much. Oh, no, uh, you, you prefer Cobra. <laughs> Sorry. That was my brother. They, uh, yeah, it's like full on. I mean, you were just talking like, in America, there's a thousand burglaries every moment. The opening uh, like montage of the movie, basically. Mm-hmm. They totally ganked that. Like, the whole beginning of the movie is literally the opening to Magnum Force. Uh, the, yeah, the, the it is. Dirty Harry film. He's, he's got the gun. He winds up aiming it at the camera, shooting it. He's stuck, uh, mm-hmm. right? Like the whole voiceover and everything. The red background. It's all Magnum Force, which is my yep. favorite Dirty Harry In movie. In fact, I, I don't know. I wouldn't do. I've, I, the opening montage of the over the top section, but the Cobra, yeah, Cobra is is a kick ass. We could movie. do a whole show on Magnum Force. Razor. Well, no I think we, one how many we stars will. did that show produce? I mean, 
good lord. There's Unfortunately, the list of them. shows, films that we're going to do on one, it's only talk and roll is now grown to about 400. So, yep, I'm having trouble weeding them out. I'm thinking the next one might be Southern Comfort, though, because I love that movie and nobody else seems to <laughs> Southern Comfort it. filmed right here in my I, home. State, that's why I want to do it. Lake, not far from I me. Fucking oh, love yeah, that movie, and I think Great we movie. should do a show on that. But, mm -hmm. um, I don't know, Razor, are you, are you into Southern Comfort? The movie, not no the drink. Oh, never brother, watch, watch it. It's deliverance mm. only. It's without the rape scene. <laughs> it's it's still it's what David uh, David Carradine, Keith Carradine. Then what's the point? <laughs> <laughs> squeal like a pig. Well, you don't have to squeal like a pig. It, it's weird. <laughs> it's about it's about a a, a Louisiana uh, a National Guard group back when now. Let's be clear. This is back in the late 80s, early 90s. I can't remember exactly what year that movie came out. I think it was the 80s, wasn't it? Uh, uh, I think so, because I saw it. My, in my aunt was actually an advisor on that show because she was in the Louisiana State National Guard at the time. Uh, but it takes place in the swamps of Louisiana. Uh, these guys are on maneuvers, and they've got nothing but blanks with them. And they steal a couple of P rows to get across uh, one of the wetter parts of the swamp. And the locals don't like it too much and they start hunting them it's a very good movie because they're weekend warriors they don't yeah. know what the fuck to do right um, and on. and all the ammo they have is blanks uh this is it's off topic for canon but uh yeah keith Carradine, powers booth fred ward my keith favorite Carradine powers powers booth movie. this is, this yeah. is some and, deadwood and action right here keith yes Carradine sir yeah. and brian james well. brian james yeah. brian james is in it too he's you'll he's recognize great. everybody in it man uh, it, david guyler walter hill it's a walter hill movie so yeah right walter so hill. i think that might be one we're going to do soon but uh mm -hmm. it, it's a brilliant movie anyway that was way off topic yeah sorry about that um but just you know future shows people might want to come and see that so I am going to cover what I was was number one on my list, and by God, this was a hard choice. But and it wasn't even I wasn't even aware till a while ago that it was a canon movie. But my absolute favorite, naturally, is going to be Highlander. Yeah, this is my favorite canon movie. Well, there uh, can be only one. There can be only one. Yes. Um, so, I. And as I say, I didn't realize it was connected to canon even till uh, I don't know, a few months ago or a year or so ago. It's technically not, but yeah, I mean, yeah. I guess. But it does say Canon Screen Entertainment presents, so they, they are involved with it, and it's in all the lists. They bought it and distributed it, yeah. yeah. So I'm Which counting for a lot of movies. Like, you'd be pretty amazed at how many of those films well like, there's a whole like, list yeah yeah how many popular films they either distributed on home video or even distributed theatrically mm -hmm. um they were they were up to their wrists in a lot of different movies that like you would not traditionally identify with canon yeah, yeah. and i think that's why i was slow slow to pick up on that fact uh i think it might have been originally made by thorn emi or yes something like that yep and then Canon picked it up and distributed it. Republic Pictures and Thorny and I, yeah. Yeah, and Thorny and I were in fairly dire straits at one point, so they probably needed to make some of these kind of deals. But I just love it. It's got everything I love. It's science fiction. It's Scottish. Well, did Canon and, release it over in the UK as well? I thought they may have just done it in the US. But uh, that wrong, might just but... have been the US, because I didn't. That's maybe why I wasn't aware. Well, this is... Um, because not all no. versions have the Canon logo on it. Yeah, this one The has, new 4K version does, but... Although it's a polygram video. This one, I, I, I just don't know, mate. But it, it's now on all the lists of Canon movies that you can look at. Um, but I just... Absolutely... I didn't even know it was a Canon movie. We all know. It's the quickening. <laughs> it's on. <laughs> okay, well, so, here's some... It's on the list of ones I think that are. Let me look. Yeah, it's here. Yeah, it, I have a list of movies that they didn't produce, but they were theatrically distributed by them, and it's yeah. on that list. So I'm counting it. Screw you all. No. <laughs> well, ahead, if man. you want, I can quickly go through like a, a couple of the highlights of that. Graduation Day, the horror movie, is one of them. Okay. Um, Dawn of the Dead. I don't know the, uh, the evil dead. Uh, She's a lovely girl, Dawn of the Dead, by the way, if you've ever met her. <laughs> Flesh and Blood. Flesh uh, and Blood, really? One. Wow. The Manhattan Project. Highlander, that obviously. The, the Hitcher. 
The Hitcher? The Hitcher? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's Get out of town. Like, oh, your favorite wow. Mannequin. Like Mannequin. Uh, the oh, Hills Have Eyes 2. We're doing the a Hitcher show as well. Yeah. We're definitely yeah. going to do a Hitcher. Um, oh, I'm down with that. Brain Damage. Red Scorpion was actually one of those movies that they released. That's probably one they grabbed because that's what they would do. And that's how they got involved with Cobra is they would sign these exclusive deals with these actors and they would weasel in on productions that were already in progress. Well, I mean, God, prestige pictures. I'm not even talking about stuff like that. I'm talking like Amadeus was a Canon uh, home video release. Amadeus. Like they handled the home video release of Amadeus because yep. they had more of an infrastructure to handle um, home well, video releases for a lot of companies who weren't quite up to speed yet. Well, that's right, Razor. I mean, that's what we were talking about earlier. They had the foresight to get involved in the distribution of stuff they had cinemas they had all distribution chains that they bought they had the vhs stuff they were well they went on to the leaders and straight to vhs entertainment as well yeah. that's one thing we haven't even really yeah. touched on at uh, all and they were like 10 years ahead of the other studios in this stuff uh you know that's why they almost made it <laughs> to being mm -hmm. one of those majors you know but um yeah, yeah we should probably include like honestly a lot of those 21st century pictures in the early 90s. Those are more goal. Yeah, those are more goal and globus films than some of the ones that they actually put out under the moniker, it, to be honest. Because it really you. is like it's the continuation of Canon Films to for a minute and a half, anyways, until it went out of yeah. business. But um for a while there, I mean Death Wish five is a yep. uh, 21st century picture. Captain like, America were, also landed there as well. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. There, there's a whole like series of movies that you totally could see on a list of Canon films. 100%. Some of them are. Well, they were Canon. technically at one point is my point. Like Captain yeah. America was a Canon film and then Golan took it with him. He took like a handful of movies with him is what he did. I was going to play the trailer with the sound down, but it's not even playing because I don't want to get the copyright. Yeah, like, I don't know how well this one will roll over. <laughs> but then yeah. it's not, it doesn't even want to play. Um, I think my internet's obviously expiring. <laughs> it's just, just running out. Can you, no. Oh, no, I've got super wonderful internet. But, uh, anyway. but Highlander is a great movie if you're it's talking about movie. whether it's good or not. I mean, any, yeah, any movie soundtrack. that opens up with the fabulous free birds kicking the shit out of somebody in a. 10,000 seat auditorium is awesome. Yeah. Okay. The, the, uh, the, the music, the, the queen soundtrack, queen. the action, <laughs> the, the fact for me, obviously being a Scotsman, it's, it's got something going for it there, even though it's played by a Frenchman and the Scotsman's playing an Egyptian with a Spanish name. And, uh, you know, and but just a Clancy Brown. I mean, come on. That man is a legend. Uh, you know, spare the burnout and then to fade away. Yeah. <laughs> so I won't be able to play that one because he ain't playing. My favorite part's when he meets his buddy on the bridge and they're talking about the old times. Yeah. You know, the duel well, the, where he can't get, kill the guy. They get pissed and they stab each other all the time. I apologize for screwing your wife or whatever the hell he yeah. did. That was yeah. funny as hell. I, mean, I bequeathed you, sir. That's what that is, do that is just the greatest movie that had no sequels and never will. <laughs> it's right. <laughs> that's right. Yep. This is it. I've always wondered why they never made a sequel. It's weird. It's they never bizarre, did. Yeah, it's the weirdest it, thing. Yeah. The TV show was better than any of those sequels, and yeah. it wasn't that great. What either. sequels? What, what sequels? Se yeah, I just right. don't know what you're talking about. The, well, gosh, <laughs> the, the, there was a there was a children's cartoon I remember watching. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Of yeah. I brought that up, wow. I figured I fucking they milked it, and milked it, and milked it. Yeah. yeah, but wasn't that a cartoon set like in the future? Yeah, it was. Yes, it was like yeah. a. It was more of a science mm -hmm. fiction kind yes. of thing. Yes. Yeah. But I did yeah. like the science Good. fiction element that. to it. Hey, 70s, check the private chat. Oh, right. Sorry. I used to watch uh, that cartoon every day before school. I'm thinking before I'm having, uh, I'm having technical mm -hmm. problems here. I can't actually see it right now. Uh, Courtney's uh, got to go. Oh, Courtney, my dear. Yes. Well, uh, thank you for being here, Lass. I know you've got a few things going on, and I, I, you know, I'll talk to you. We'll talk later offline together. Definitely. Um, um, I just want to tell everyone that uh, Breakin and Barfly, because the boys got into all the action stuff. If you know, wrong one. That's not Courtney. That's not me. <laughs> no, definitely, definitely not Courtney. <laughs> There she is. Um, your melons, in right? Beginning, I brought up Breakin and uh, Barfly. If you guys haven't seen either of those movies, they're amazing. Barfly, about, uh, love Barfly. I'm an old bartender too. I love it. I love that movie. Mm -hmm. Um, 
anyway, yeah. So um, thanks for coming out. I have a channel. Um, they've been dropping the link in the thing. It's Courtney's Fellowship of Oddballs, and uh, I am streaming again. So um, otherwise, you can. I'm usually with 70s on this show, and on Sunday nights uh, on Mark D with a C. Mark, creepy little I, book. I, I can never creepy say. Little right? Creepy little oh, book. Oh, creepy little book. Yeah, I I uh, I do a lot of stuff with him too. Well, thanks so, for joining us. Everyone uh, have an awesome day. Yeah, you Give too. Give my I'll, invites for Wednesday, huh, doll? I'll talk to you later and take care. And yeah, I look forward to seeing you in the next stream. Thanks, Lars. All right. Bye, guys. Take care. Bye. 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 Uh, you're still here. I'm trying to get out. <laughs> <laughs> we can't move on until you leave. We're just going to sit here in silence. <laughs> Right. Uh, Courtney's is great. Yeah. So hope everything's okay with you last. I know you got some family stuff going on. Um, yeah. So that was my, I mean, you got all my five top ones and I'm sorry to make it about me, but, but God damn it, it is my show. Sure, um, sure, it's your show, man. It's okay. So Life Force, Death Wish 2, Cyborg, Cobra, Highlander. And I would have put Buckaroo Buckaroo Banzai in as 5.1 if I had the chance. So, we're probably going to head for some kind of conclusion soon because I'm probably getting signals from upstairs that I'm going to do some, some kind of get back to real life. Um, say no more. So, uh, what have we missed? I mean, in this short, brief overview, what do you like, Razor? What What would you particularly think? I mean, one we didn't here? talk about, which is considered sort of the pinnacle of the Death Wish series, is Death Wish Three. Where they the series turned a corner from like a right. vigilante crime movie to urban fucking Rambo. <laughs> right. Yeah, he's literally got a Browning machine gun and he's just gunning down wave after wave of <laughs> shit bags. Just amazing film. Sounds more like this is Rambo. the point where you didn't no longer have to touch his dick. You just had to be in the vicinity of Charles Bronson and you'd probably right? get killed. Yeah. Literally, he kissed a chick one time, and her car exploded. The, the next, <laughs> time. God forbid, Incredible. you're his friend. And okay. I like, and I like Death Wish Four as well. The Crackdown, where that one got up on its soapbox about the the crack and yeah. cocaine pandemic of the eighties, right. and he runs around just taking down. It's almost like a Hitman film, and by that I mean like the video game series Hitman, right? Where yeah, he's, yeah. he's got these targets up on a board and he's taking them out one by one and like literally how we went in four films from this guy is a liberal pacifist architect yeah. to <laughs> now he is a hired hitman to kill drug pushers don't you think <laughs> though know, that, that, that says something about the human condition that with inside all of us no matter the veneer it doesn't take long for the animal to come out oh, <laughs> and the, the neanderthal in us to come out yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, I like feminist interpretive dance. Oh, fuck it. I'm just going to kill this city. <laughs> <laughs> right. well, if you want to talk about Neanderthals, man, uh, you know, when when you sent me the message about this and top five, this and uh, everything else, you asked for some honorable mentions and, and yes, some oddball indeed. stuff. Uh, one of the ones that I really dig, it's not in my top five, but I had to give it an honorable mention to, and it's really different. If you ever wondered what it would be like if a martial artist took on Michael Myers, New York, a city. go yeah. watch Hero and the Terror, starring Chuck. Oh, I, I was going to mention yeah. that one. I yes, love that. It is what a about Blind Justice? Play. Oh, yeah. Blind Justice is good. Yeah. Yes, Blind Justice. Which is one they released. Of, yeah, it's a remake of one of the Zatoichi films uh, yep. with, with Roger Hauer in it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, always loved *Fear right and the Terror* though because uh, it, it, it was the first. It's one of the only movies I've ever seen where What's Chuck Norris problem? actually looks scared at points in it. Yeah, you know, uh, like, yeah. he's more of a like traditional cop in that yeah. movie. It's a cop mm -hmm. film where he's sort of up against this uh, huge monster, sort of who yes. traumatized him earlier mm -hmm. on, earlier in life. It's sort of like a. a soft remake of a movie that he made with Orion Pictures long before that called, uh, what is it, Silent Rage? Yeah, sort of, Silent sort Rage. Of, yep. yeah. Mm -hmm. Sort of like Another a one, different like takeoff it. on that, where he's mm -hmm. hunting down this giant serial killer 
Mm-hmm. And <laughs> Silent Rage is the one I meant. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, mm-hmm. I just couldn't help but laugh as he's r- strapping the uh, ammunition. Well, around yes. <laughs> what I love about these trailers is you can just cut out the the title at this point. It's just like Charles Bronson does what Charles Bronson does in. Oh, Charles he's gonna kill Bronson. the giggler. Charles he killed the Bronson. giggler. He just, just killed the giggler. Oh my god! Charles, Charles Bronson, Bronson just kicks just ass. Bears. Part seven. I love the fact too that like the last guy who fired a Browning like that earned a Medal of Honor for it. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) yeah. The weapons just get bigger. Charles Bronson in real life, he was a World War II tail gunner. He got a Purple Heart. Yeah, for Christ's sake! Like he, yeah. Charles Bronson destroys an entire city. The reason (laughs) Bronson became an actor is because of the GI Bill. He got a a free education for it. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 Brian. It's the city turned on Charles Bronson. So now <laughs> Charles has turned on the, the city. city. Well, you couldn't hear it earlier, but the trailer to <laughs> Death Wish 2 opens with when rape and murder are the crimes. Brian <laughs> is the only punishment. It's <laughs> awesome. It's awesome stuff. Yeah, love it. Incredible. Yeah, but here on the art t- trailers. I, I don't think I've seen this one here in the terror. Yeah, they do oh, not make trailers now. It is good. No, Canon knew how to sell a fucking movie. Oh yeah, even when they it, it's even not made. like other ones that you're going to see with Chuck Norris. It, it, yeah, yeah. He actually, another, uh, if co- you want to see him actually act, watch that movie. He actually looks scared in, in yeah. points. Yeah, I had a yeah. couple couple more that I thought were quite interesting for various reasons. And just forgive me while I find the images. Um, but, you know, they did a couple of weird things, uh, odd ones. Here we go. So there was this one called the Apple, which originally. I think oh, this was one of those yeah. ones that they really dumped a lot into. And it, yeah, it, yeah, uh, it was. I think they'd made a version of it in, in Israel. And then this was a, like a reworking James of it. Munchausen joined. And they really, really wanted to make this a huge hit. And it wasn't. It flopped. It didn't have any well known it. And it's just like a sci-fi musical. But apparently. And I've never seen it. Believe me, I've actually never even been able to find a copy. The songs are really catchy in it. According to the the book by your your friend, he said the songs kind of stick in your head, and you know it was actually pretty good. So, but yeah, a bit of a flaw. Because it was probably one of those things where they. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, Razor. I don't know. It kind of reminds me in terms of art design and and whatnot in terms of its style and also the time period. It kind of reminds me of the Wiz. Where it's like this big, right. heavy on heavy on the art design, high concept, a little bit dark kind yes. of a thing, and it, like you wonder who the hell the intended audience was, well, and it becomes saying, a cult thing later. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it kind of reminds you it, of that. It failed to find any audience, but I'm going to give you a little bit of trivia. So it says here, choreography by Nigel Lithgow. Yeah, Nigel wow. Lithgow. Yep. So you think you can dance, Nigel Lithgow? Wow. So there you go. I'm going to have to tell my wife about that when she's an addict for that show. Exactly. Uh, So we talked about Enter the Ninja uh, briefly. Great movie. And then 10 to Midnight, which is another one of my favorite Bronson ones. But uh, G. Lee Thompson. It really does strike you as a little bit of a a death wish, like an unofficial death wish. That's what I kind of thought. Sort of like a remake of Psycho, but with a bare ass to like. Kind yeah, of right. Norman Bates, he's yeah. naked constantly. Yeah, I, I di- love I love this scene in Ten to Midnight. It probably has one of the greatest standalone out of context quotes in history, where he's interrogating this psycho sexual sadist like serial killer, mm-hmm. and he finds his sex toys, and he's like, "What's this, Warren? Warren, why don't you tell me what this is? What is this? <laughs> it's for jacking off, isn't it?" <laughs> isn't, he a, isn't he a character in the movie jack and off um jack and off, isn't it? you know what i like about this so it's got jeffrey lewis who's fucking awesome he was always great and wilford apparently brimley. uh wilford brimley uh, brian uh just to let you know uh, according to imbd you can watch the apple on pluto tv as oh, we speak all right oh, I'm, nice. gonna, I'm gonna have to watch it because people are saying it's it just sticks in your hand. It, it's they become a true cult once they've watched it. it maybe it had some kind of subliminal message in it. That it oh, made- we forgot we when we were talking about breaking, breaking, and breaking too. They actually came out with a third film called Rappin'. 
Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, has no. It. Shouldn't wow. you shouldn't they have called it breaking oh. wind? Breaking wind. <laughs> right. Breaking right. Wind. <laughs> there it you was go. Actually, a ra- it, they made a movie about rapping instead, and had I they cast Ice T in the freaking movie. Oh, Ice-T. that's right. Ice T was in it. Yeah. But this this is another good one. Fifty two pickup. Elmore Leonard. Yes. John Frankenheimer directed. Roy Scheider and Margaret and Margaret, one of the hottest women in history. Yeah. Um, I love this movie. Um, so that's another. Was there un- really a Hollywood studio other than Cannons that just epitomized what the eighties was as far as movie entertainment oh, went? Maybe, maybe Orion Pictures. Maybe, maybe. Orion. Yeah. Yeah. Orion had a huge stable in the eighties. Yeah. But they had a very big horse. They needed a huge stable. <laughs> <laughs> it's a terrible joke, I know. It's the best yeah. I can do after three hours. Um, yeah, anything else, guys? I mean, we will we will come to a conclusion soon because uh, everybody's got to go and eat and do stuff and uh, whatever. Um, but yeah, I'm so hungry. I'm so hungry. I, I hungry. had I had mentioned the gore movies before, but there, there's a reason why that they're in the strange category. Um, what seems like a typical sword and sorcery, sword and sandals type movie. Uh, mm. is actually based on a series of books that's beloved by the BDSM community. Oh, no. Uh, oh, right. Are you yeah. close to that community, John? Or uh, I, used, <laughs> I, I, I have friends that were in it. So, you know, I, I, I know a lot about it. And the books, Beats- I, I read the books. They're... Uh. I've yep. I've tried to get into that, but it just I don't is, get it. Is the, the friend, friend it, it, is the friend in the room with us now? Is he uh, <laughs> nope. chilling you to nope. harm yourself or others? <laughs> it nope. beats the nope. hell out of me why anyone would do that. <laughs> <laughs> Was it my thing? But it was their thing, so. Right. You know what? Uh, what you, we don't uh, kink uh, shame. You, you nope. know, if you're a necrophiliac uh, into bestiality and um, BDSM, you're flogging a dead horse, basically. <laughs> well, I can say this about uh, the Golden Globus era of canon. Uh, they threw so many darts at the dartboard that they actually did hit some critical acclaim with Barfly, with uh, Runaway Train. But most of their stuff was just let's go to the movies, grab a bucket of popcorn, and have some fun. And, and, and I personally dug it. I, th- I thought a lot of their stuff was great. Myself. The kind of movies we don't get much anymore. No, like we don't. Uh, yeah. From it's what I massive. hear, Runaway Train is one of those now. N- not Runaway Train, but uh, Bullet Train is one of those. <laughs> Runaway Bullet Train would be a great mashup. Then, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, what Canon really did was they fulfilled a need for movies that, like the drive-ins, had kind of disappeared in that era. They did. Video they stores did. had had sprouted up. So these were the guys that were now taking over for that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh, lost tone. Looks like he muted himself. I don't know oh, you muted yourself. It accidentally? Or? No, I did on purpose. No, I must have muted know. too early. That's all. Sorry. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah, you, you cut yourself you, off, pal. Damn it. You muted too hard. Well, so that's where this stuff kind of pro- uh, sprouted up was around the video store and the necessity mm-hmm. for you know, more stuff and a lot of those exploitation B, B movies that came with the you know, driving era had mm. dried up. So, yeah. yeah. Mm. Anyway, I, um, yeah, we I, could probably, we may have a round two of this. I'm, I'm beginning to think at some point in the next couple of months and maybe just focused in, in on certain groups of canon movies because we really have left a lot of stuff. On, on yeah, there's a covered. lot of stuff we hadn't even talked about. Yeah. Brian. But know, it's yeah. been a blast, an absolute blast. Um uh, yeah, so I'd like to, to just thank you guys all for being here. Maybe give you a chance to to uh, the usual promote your wonderful stuff. Uh, I'll start with our special, one of our special guests, because obviously Tom is very special too. Uh, Razorfest, my friend, thank you very much for coming on the channel today. I really appreciate it. Uh, it's been a blast. What's uh, in the near future for, for your wonderful channel, sir? Oh my goodness. A lot of things. I'm, I mean, I'm going to be releasing another, uh, rage holic cinema here pretty soon. Maybe, uh, featuring one of the titles that we talked about today. Oh, I'm going to be doing another metal mythos. <laughs> a lot of things are going to be coming. I, I do whatever the hell I want, whenever of the course, hell I want. Of course. So. Good. And we all enjoy 
thoroughly, my friend. You are, uh, I, I mean, no, that would be hyper, hyperbole. I was going to say hyperbole, but that would be a different word. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was a long time just kind of watcher of stuff on YouTube, and then I discovered channels like yourself. Uh, I've chatted in your chat many times, and you've been um, hugely entertaining and very encouraging to a guy like me to get in and say, I can do stuff too, you know. So thank you for that. Thank you yeah. very much for the example you've set. And for all that great material, because I'm into the stuff that you're into. So I love it, man. Thanks. Oh, thank, you for thank you for having me on. Oh, my, our pleasure. Um, and, of course, our other special guest is, is the wonderful uh, Tom Connors, our great friend. Uh, what's uh, going on for you? Are you on um, uh, um, yelling tonight or...? I might hop in for a few minutes a little later if I'm not busy. I, I do got to eat something at some point today. I've been oh, streaming pretty much nonstop. So, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I want to. All, all those bottles are full under the table now. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to thank Razor Fist, though, for taking the time to hang out with us tonight, too. Oh, uh, special thanks. And uh, yeah, thank all you guys for, for popping in and, and listening out there in the chat as well. Cool. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate you being here, brother. Um, <laughs> thanks for having me someone's expiring on the stream which may be a first but um <laughs> so let's work our way through joe what's going on with you my friend oh man just uh getting back to the uh regular grind uh here now that the new year's celebration's over with uh i've got four weekly shows uh of course the next time you're going to see me on youtube is on state of the atmosphere of course everybody here's always got an invitation to that uh i send that out on uh, twitter on the dms um my brother and i are back doing our thursday show the brothers hack the matrix uh at 6 30 on thursdays um and i'm back to doing the comic book uh, on Saturday afternoons at 1.30. Uh, we're going to start plotting issue two of the privateer. Issue one is uh, finished plotting, and I will be detailing it out and hopefully having it out in some venue in March. Well, uh, I was gonna say, that's why I was thanking Razor Fist earlier for the Iron Fist thing, uh, or, or excuse me, the, uh, the Iron Age moniker you've given it all, man, because... Uh, yeah, I've been thinking about doing this for years, but after watching guys like Friday Night Tights and uh, and you, you've inspired me to do it on uh, myself. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I got going on. I'm Joe's Atmosphere on every social media. So, so you tell guys us can when, check it out. Tell us when and where we'll be able to get episode one of the Privateer. The, the okay. This is the deal. I, I talked to a guy from Sc Scout Comics. They're kind of like Image where you can uh, uh, you sign a contract with them, but they let you keep the IP. In other words, you work for them for a while doing your thing, and they let you keep the IP to where it, you can do it on your own after that. I, I'm not like... I'm not like Eric. I don't have that kind of money to hmm. self-produce. So it's either going to be a Kickstarter, Indiegogo, or it's going to be Scout Comics probably. So okay, I, I still haven't figured that part of it out. Well, let everybody, so, yeah, let us all know. And you know you're guaranteed my support. Absolutely, yeah. brother. I knew that already. Yeah. yeah cool. Yeah, Thanks for, for sure. being here today. Mate. Always, you. man. Always. John, my friend, what's happening, dude? Oh, not a lot. I'm just over here trying not to fanboy over uh, Razor Fist because I've been a uh, long-time watcher of his. Yeah, it's been tough. But, I've uh, had to resist the temptation. Yeah, hard. <laughs> not. To it's fanboy. okay. I still piddle a little every time. <laughs> <laughs> that's just, uh, that's that's. Just I can't see method. Bad Tom doing that. I can't see. Yeah, that. yeah. Well, I think they uh, make uh, adult could... undergarments for that now. I'm... Yeah, I have to wear Depends <laughs> now when he shows up. Yeah, so John, what's what's coming up for you, well, buddy? Uh, you can find me pretty much every day on Pop Culture Minefield. Uh, they have the morning show at 10 a.m. Central. Uh, uh, Tuesdays at, or Fridays at uh, uh, 2 o'clock and Saturdays at noon. Um, also behind the scenes of uh, Dork Side of the Ring, which is the wrestling show on 1 o'clock Sundays. Uh, I stream uh, usually every Tuesday, except I'm in the middle of working on getting stuff together for my second Godzilla retrospective, which is the second half of or second part of my Showa era. 
Godzilla. So that's going to delay my stream by, by a week. So it won't be till next week till I start streaming again, but that'll be at four on Tuesdays. Great. Look forward to it, mate. And uh, look forward to seeing you on Pop C Culture Minefield uh, when I get the chance to pop in. It's uh, always a great uh, channel to subscribe. Are looking for someone to subscribe to? A uh, great team of guys do some fantastic stuff. Pop Culture Minefield. Uh, Pope, my suit friend, <laughs> what's uh, going down, man? Well, hopefully, um, we've got uh, I've got a little bit better internet connection, so hopefully, I'll be getting my Twitch channel back up online. So, we'll be doing some gaming, probably some battle tech stuff because I've been meaning to continue doing that. It's um, uh, had the bandwidth to do it. Um, so hopefully I'll be playing some more battle tech over on there. And then, um, on my channel every Sunday, we have rock and roll religion. Um, not quite sure who the next one we're going to cover might be it's probably going to be Michael Schenker. Cause I've been well, meaning to be get cool. him and, uh, that would be cool, mate. And I know, yeah. I know you, you, you said, uh, you've got some other related acts that you want to talk about. Well, so, I think uh, we could tie that in with the, you do that and I'll do a future. It's totally talk and roll on the scorpions, which I want to do. So absolutely. Oh, man. Scorpions. Yes. Yeah. Cool. And, uh, we I've been looking forward to doing Michael Shanker for a long time. because He's a brilliant guitar player and you know, you know, I'm a fan of the flying V. I got one right there. That's right. Yeah. But, um, Always good to uh, be on the panel. Raise your fist. It's been great to talk to you, man. I, like all these guys, I've been a viewer of you for a long time, and you're kind of one of the guys I uh, try to emulate a lot in terms of, you know, talking about stuff I love and yeah, right trying on. to do it myself. Yeah. yeah. So Don't ask uh, permission. Just fucking do it. Exactly. exactly. There you go. The heavy metal way. I, didn't, I don't recall asking you. We'll just fucking do it. <laughs> yeah. uh, so uh thank you all chat you guys have been amazing as always um this has been great for me because i didn't realize half of these films were canon until we started talking about them <laughs> well i aim to educate that's why i'm here and uh as always <laughs> you know thank you for showing up and uh i can't wait to uh see see you guys next time yeah, I'll see you soon, mate. Thanks, uh, thanks for being here. Uh, Imperatus, our good friend. Um, what's uh, happening in the world of um, goat sacrificing? <laughs> <laughs> well, finally, I re-recorded yet again the review I was doing for Sargeist's Let the Devil In, so that review should be up soon. Nice. And I was realizing there's a couple other bands that I'm missing out of my review library, so expect a Immortals, Pure Holocaust, and Dark Thrones Under the, si under the Funeral Moon to be uh, coming short soon to follow. Other than that, uh, I got some gaming stuff coming in the works. Been plotting and scheming a few things with Brahma Bull and some other people. So nice, once nice. schedules align, we will be doing that. And uh, I'll just give my obligatory because it's true as well. But, you know, Razor, you were also a bit of an inspiration for what I do as well. So thanks for that. I appreciate that. Been really cool hanging out with you today. And uh, give good old Cicero a good ear scratch for me. Right. <laughs> right. I actually <laughs> got to take him out. Uh, thank you, guys. No, no problem. Give Terran an ear scratch as well. Be... Right, right. I'll, I'll have to. <laughs> yeah, tell the rolls Mech Warrior character right <laughs> <to> control <laughs> yeah. uh, Thanks, buddy, for being here. We'll see you in another show again soon. Oh, yeah, um, absolutely. You know, so uh, Darius, my co executive producer and internet brother, YouTube brother. What's happening with you, my friend? Hey, thanks as always uh, for having me on and, uh, and trusting me with so much responsibility. And this was a real treat uh, for Canon films, many of which I haven't seen. And I appreciate you not asking me to pick a top five so I don't have to admit how many I haven't seen. Oh, did and... I not? <laughs> Shit, sorry. What is your top five? No, no. I didn't mean no, to ignore no. you with that. I just, we... <laughs> I just uh, fuck a Robanza. Oh, God, favorite. I feel bad now. And, uh... <laughs> Shit. <laughs> See, we yeah, didn't even uh, talk about Buckaroo Bonsai. Oh, no, we, we will. Just... No, we got to do a show just on that. I'm yeah. telling you. Or, so, or yeah. just on uh, Peter Weller films. Yeah. And uh, yeah, no, this is also a special treat. I'm glad that I had the day off of work so I could be early. And I've probably been listening to uh, or watching Razor Fist as long as Midnight's Edge, long before I got involved with live streams and, uh, you know, 
making friends on the internet. So uh, very cool to have you on. And uh, yeah, no. Uh, Thanks, mate. Appreciate yeah, your yeah. help very much. I do really do. It's always uh, a pleasure, buddy. So catch you. I'll catch you later on tonight. Uh, did I miss anybody? Well, Courtney was here. Thank you very much, Courtney. And uh, it's always great to, to have you on board. She is the best. She's great. And as you know, she's she's a, a real rocker. She used to be in a lot of bands. Um, she knows her stuff, particularly about punk and alternative stuff. Uh, so as for my good self, I uh, would like to once again thank you all for being here. Thank you very much, Razor. As, 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 it, these guys said it all. I mean, I used to just stick a lot of stuff on YouTube, like music videos, and just watch all that. And then I suddenly realized there's this other set of things going on in there. People were actually talking about stuff, and you were one of the very first channels that really got me into watching that kind of thing. And hey, these guys do live streams. I could watch a live stream on YouTube. Incredible. <laughs> it's right. total, re total revelation. So thank you for all you do and for being here today. It's been a blast. Hopefully we'll see you again someday. Yep. Um, and Tom, thanks to you, mate, uh, brother. Uh, you know, we'll definitely see you again later, I'm sure. Uh, and to the chat, uh, you have been absolutely magnificent today. We made a lot of new friends who came on board. Hopefully you, you'll all come back for more shows uh, it was really good to see you here. The the regulars, you know who you are. There's too many to go through. I always appreciate your support. You've all been really great friends. Uh, everybody over in Odyssey and Rumble that was there, thanks for being there. We're keeping an eye. We were keeping an eye on that. Thank you for all the tips. Uh, so all I'd like to say is um, I hope you all have a fantastic 2023. That you're all healthy prosperous and can get to do lots of the things that you want to do and that you like and that's what we like we we guys and girls here love to talk about the things that we love and there's still many of those things out there so let's keep talking about that i think i can speak for all of us their uh, 70s when we say thank you for having us man it was a great subject yeah. great it's my pleasure it's uh it's been a blast, and we're going to keep on doing it. I think, uh, yeah, for me, in terms of upcoming stuff, I'll be on Floral Under a Rock on Wednesday on the, uh, his show. Um, I actually am not aware of the start time, so I better figure that out soon. Uh, Midnight's Edge After Dark uh, tomorrow. Toxic Tuesday with Nick Visor on Tuesday night as well. I think we're doing Wayne's World tomorrow night. Uh, Thursday, meet at Midnight's Edge After Dark. And Saturday night with Brahma Bull, we do Bourbon and Birding. Birding? We do birding too. Bourbon and boarding. <laughs> Bourbon and birding, birding sounds more interesting to me. Hey, <laughs> no, man. We're talking girls? Is. What's up? I don't know what it is, but it sounds good. Bourbon and boarding at 10 p.m. Uh, mountain bats. time where we talk about hockey <laughs> and we drink whiskey and bourbon. It's as simple as that. Uh, so until next time, thanks again, everybody. Take care, and we'll see you all again soon. And I will hit the play outro and end stream button. Cheerio.